If you wish to make tofu from scratch, you must first invent the universe. Welcome to Tinker Tailor Solar Fry. I'm Ian. I'm Kathleen. And today we're going to be making tofu from scratch. I'm super excited. Yeah, this is going to be, uh, this is something I've always kind of wanted to do. Yeah. Uh, uh, I have no idea how, well, I've seen that one uh, video that was going around the internet of uh, a very beautiful girl making yes, tofu. Yes, the, the, the not primitive technology, but very much, you know, always in the same breath people mention those. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we're, neither of us is a beautiful girl. <laughs> You know, we're grown, strong, independent women who don't need no man yeah. to make them tofu. Yeah, yeah. We can make uh, it ourselves. But, uh, Ian, mm -hmm. I, have I been buying tofu all this time like a chump? <laughs> Why, no, Kathleen. Pre-made tofu is a convenience that we can afford in our modern culture. Oh, okay. But apparently it's not difficult to make, to make tofu, and uh, from what I understand, the flavor is a bit different. Oh, well, I, mean, I can't wait. I... I'm really excited to find out about this. Plus, we're going to get two instructions, and in, actually three instructions in one, because before you can make tofu, you have to make soy milk. How and, convenient. Yeah. And then when we're make, done making uh, the first batch of tofu, we're going to roll it back and try it again. Mm -hmm. But this time using already pre-made soy milk. Oh, for ultra convenience. Okay. Exactly. To see if there's a difference between the uh, the different. Treatments. What a fun let's try we're doing. Yeah, I think that's it's going to be a lot of fun. And we get to eat the tofu. Yes, which is going to be the best part about these. Always. Holy crap! You pop your bow tie out from your. Uh, oh. It is rubbing, and then that rubs the fabric that your mic is attached uh, to. Well, maybe I just need to adjust my apron here a bit. Oh yeah, can I have a black apron, please? Thank you, Beige. You're welcome. There we go. Let's pull that down just a bit. All right. So the first step in making tofu is going to be, of course, mm -hmm. finding your soybeans. Yeah, where do you find just like plain soybeans? Turns out that wasn't as easy as I thought it was going to be wandering around here. Uh, even in Victoria. Even in Victoria, where we have a decent, uh, I'd say, Asian population, mm -hmm. I had to go to a couple of different Asian supermarkets. Uh, to find just, these are, like, these are edamame, uh, sort of. They're, they're white soybeans. So uh, edamame is known as a green soybean. There are okay. also black soybeans. But these specifically are the white soybeans, which are what you're going to want for white uh standard tofu. Interesting. Uh, these ones or, are organic GMO free, but that's not because I wanted them to be. It's really just because they were the only ones I could find. Interesting. How much How much was this all of these soybeans? Oh, all these soybeans were probably about three bucks. Okay, so that's still cheaper than actually just buying tofu. Exactly. Not like a lot cheaper, to be honest with you. No, but there is going to be, you're, you are paying something uh, for the convenience of them. So, uh, what you're going to do is you're going to want to wash them first of all, rinse them out, and then you're going to cover them in water and let them sit overnight for between 18 to 24 hours. To get them all soft. Exactly. Most yeah. Get them soft and full of full of water. Right, that, right. Uh, get you, sorry, I wasn't going to make some sort of joke about no, please. <laughs> soft soybeans. <laughs> about, Not knowing how to do a hard day's work on the farm, but... Uh, about these clean, shiny soy boys? Yeah. Ready for, ready for the blender? I love me some soy boys. Mm. Yeah, they're they're good. Uh, they're now full of water, and the protein is available to be broken apart. Okay, um, are they edible as is? You know, I tried one because what they they suggest you do is to test them out. You want to see if they're if you can break them with your tooth. So they are toothy, but they're a bit. Uh, <coughs> they're kind of like a bitter oh. pea. They are like a bitter pea. Mm -hmm. it's not... I mean, that's all I want of that. <laughs> I, yeah, I wouldn't recommend any more than that. So you've, you've washed your soybeans, you've rinsed them, you've soaked them up. Next step is to release them from their prison of form. Right. And for that, you're going to apparently want a blender. Oh, good. We can use a blender next to, lav to, next, next to lav mic, so what could possibly go wrong? <laughs> Absolutely nothing. Let's grab in here. There, because I got my apron on. I've been futzing with my microphone, so it hopefully won't rub against between my apron and my shirt. So, so apologies if you guys heard any of that. So this is your blender from home. Exactly. I feel like maybe we should have taken Beige's Vitamix. Maybe. Here, so what don't I like? Yeah. Cup the... Uh... Oh, well. Hmm. Yeah, that's mostly working. I'm helping. It's ah. a clean table. 
All right, I, I assume we're going to cook them anyhow. Yeah, everything's going to get cooked in addition, so we can just toss that in there. Yeah, it's that's also, a lot of soybeans that you got for three bucks. Yeah, it's also going to get filtered too, so that's important. Huh, I'm beginning to wonder if maybe I should measure these out. No, oh, it's too late for that now. Yeah, it's too late. Measure the final product. But a I, slurry. But I think I'm only going to make about half this uh, this batch of beans. And then save the other half for the, our second method? Well, we're not going to use those for the second method, but I'm just worried about right, so overfilling the pot because the second step is going to be boiling these up, and that's going to uh, be dangerous if we have a full, full pot. Right, right, right. Okay. So that's. Do we need to add any liquid to this? Yes, we do. Okay, good. So is there any special liquid we add or just water? Just straight up water. We apparently want to, come on, get in there. There we go. So we're going to want to add enough water that it's just above the level of the beans. I'd call that just above the level of beans. Close enough, yeah. They certainly have a green flavor, even though these are white soybeans. Mm -hmm. I think that's actually going to, let's hold on to that, because I think that's going to transfer over to the actual taste of the tofu. Interesting. Maybe we should turn our microphones down. Let's do that. Corey, would you give us a slight pull off on the levels? Done. Cool. This is a very quiet blender. It's been a while since I've used this. There we go, we'll just go to frappe mode. Maybe like a spoon to like get in there. That's gonna be it. Would an immersion blender be effective? I don't think so for this. Probably not this. I mean, we could try it. I could try it in the future, but I doubt it would be effective. Oh, do you wanna add more water? Well, maybe not. Eh, a little bit more probably wouldn't hurt. All right. Let's put that in there. It's all going in there anyway, so. There we are. Huh. My blender is not as pleased. Perhaps the vitamin, Vita's Vitamix might have been a good idea. They're, they're pureeing. This yep. is, for those of you who are keeping track at home, Ian's blender is an Osterizer Cyclotrol 10. <laughs> From the Imperial Corporation. Wow. Yeah, this was my mother's blender. And, and her mother's before. <laughs> I think she might have actually bought this when she was in uh, college. Wow. It's getting the job done. Yeah, it works. That's the important thing. Well, that sure is like a chunky slurry. Yeah, let's see if we can get some of that on camera there. Have a look at that. Oh, wait, Bees just has to move the camera. One second. Get that up. Oh, yeah. So that seems to be the, uh, the color we're looking for. You're going by color, not texture? Or color and texture. The, the, right. the whole shebang, really. Do we add any salt or anything? No. Interesting. No, you won't add any salt. Well, not of the sodium chloride variety. Oh, I see. We gotta make it, we gotta make it curdle somehow, right? Yep. And we'll get to that. But let's pour that out into our pot here. Oh, that's a lovely, lovely texture. I mean, it's a texture. Yeah. <laughs> get in there. This is quite fun. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then for a, I was originally going to do the whole amount, but I think that might be too ambitious. Uh, the original recipe called for 10 cups of water, which would have been the full one of these, a full growler. Right. But I think we're going to go with half the uh, half the batch. Right. So it appears to be, we we'll use about half. Interesting. So technically, we could have added more water to make an even more smooth frap, because you're adding much water anyhow, right? Yeah, you're definitely going to be wanting to use, using a lot of water. Oh, we're 
actually, it's not less so soybean fiber that we care about. It's the proteins. Exactly. So, like, the size of the chunk is not super relevant. Exactly. All of the fiber is actually going to be left behind in the end anyway. What do you do with that? I wonder if you can make something else out you of it. You totally can. What could you make out of it, Ian? Well, we'll get into that, actually. When, but, uh, yeah, let's, on? Uh, yeah. Yeah, let's do that. I was wondering if we should go if we should just go whole hog, but I think let's not tempt fate with a boil over. So turn it on. Ah, uh, first we need to plug it plug in. Plug it in. Plug it in. Turn it on. There we go. It screams to let you know it's working. All right, so we want to go to medium heat, which so like twelve hundred. That's like that seems about good. Yeah. It goes from from sixty to two forty. So I've got it at 180. Okay, actually, in that case, oh, we have uh, we have te temperature markings on there. Yeah. Perfect. Actually, what we want to do then is take that down to ah. So interesting thing about this uh, this stove is that it reads degrees for degrees Celsius and F for degrees Fahrenheit. Hmm. So we're gonna take it to 90 because oh. 60 is too low. And 90 is going to be probably fine. Okay, interesting. Oh, so very. So this is like low heat then, because this is yeah. only the five. Like if you can, if you could see it, it's the 500 watt setting on our convection or on our little countertop unit here, which is yeah, 60 degrees. It starts out at 300 watts or 60 degrees Celsius, which I think is just a nice bath, really. Yeah. Uh, 140 Fahrenheit, and we've taken it up to 90, which is near boiling. So it won't boil at 90, right? Because the boiling part of water is 100. Exactly. But we are apparently going to get some pretty uh, heavy foaming going on. How exciting. Which is what I'm a little bit worried, which is what I'm worried about uh, boiling over with. All right. Well, I mean, eh, well, let's leave that for a couple. It, like, it's going to take a while to come up to temperature. Yeah. I'm wondering if we should add even just a bit more water to that. No, that should be fine. This is most definitely a let's try activity. So the nice thing about tofu is that you can make it with the ingredients you have at home, probably, aside from the soybeans. You don't need anything too fancy. Mm -hmm. What you need is your soy, mm -hmm. be it in milk, hopefully milk form or bean form. Yeah, but soy milk has like additional emulsifiers and stabilizers and stuff, right? Yeah, you're going to want to get as close to fresh soy milk as you can. At least that's what I've been told. I mean, that makes sense, right? The more stabilizers and stuff you have in it and yeah. like additional things. So let's see what we've got in this, in the uh, Sunrise Unsweetened Soy Beverage. Other soys are available. Filtered water, whole soybeans, sodium bicarbonate, which is an acidity regulator. That's it. Okay. That seems great. So that's interesting that because that comes to the next, uh, what's going to come up later, which I was just going to talk about. The other uh, ingredient that you need is some kind of a pH lowering agent. So you want to make it basic? Uh, acidic. Acidic. Yeah. So, so the, the, right, because the bicarb is taking the acid out. Exactly. So you're probably going to have to add more of your pH stuff to this because it's already got a bunch of baking. Sodium bicarbonate's baking soda. Exactly. This is water, soybeans, and baking, baking soda. soda. I wonder it, how it tastes. It's this, probably this is, wretched. This is like an uncarbonated version of, uh, of Canada Dry. Club soda. Nutritionally, this is near void. One cup. 90 calories, five grams of fat, but good fat from soybeans. Uh, sodium, three milligrams, which I guess is just naturally occurring. Total carb, three grams, fiber, one gram, sugar, zero grams, protein, eight grams. I said nutritionally void, but that's actually quite high in protein, mm -hmm. although tofu is quite high in protein. That's the, all that suspended protein. So yeah, your lower is, there are three methods you can use. Number one, if you're cheap and you don't know what you want to get, or you just want to try it yourself, you can use lemon juice, and mm. that's apparently enough to uh, to coagulate. To curdle it. Exactly. The other ones, though, that are more traditional are gypsum, which is just cal calcium sulfate. Isn't and that in sheetrock? Yeah, yes, it is. But uh, that you'll find that gypsum is most often used in Chinese to tofu. Interesting. Okay. But if you want to go the Japanese route, you want to get yourself something called nagari. 
Did you get this in town? Yes, I did. This I was actually able to find in our local Japanese uh, grocery shop. Wow, just in, in there in Fujia. Yeah, Fujia. Uh, the problem is, I, I'm starting to learn which of the staff that I should talk to when I need a weird ingredient. Mm. I recently had to buy some, uh, some bro uh, soup stock mm -hmm. for a specific type of soup, and you know, the, the regular staff don't know, and then they go talk to this one person. Uh, oh, yes, that I know. And mm. then they take you to the, to the weird stuff area. So this is a clear liquid. Yes. And nagari. Yep. Which literally just means bitter salt. Ingredients, magnesium chloride. Yes. That's the difference. And huh. apparently this will add just a slight, uh, slight bitterness sometimes. So what do you use this for aside from making tofu? Apparently it's somewhat popular as just a nutritional supplement. Yeah, according to the label, you're supposed to take, uh, twist it this way, three times a day, 10 to 30 milliliters. So very little. Yeah. Like exactly. max two, two tablespoons, but still. Yeah, not much at all. Magnesium chloride, so it is Epsom salts. Yeah. So it's a very easy, uh, very easy recipe to use. The other thing that a lot of the recipes that I've uh, read on the net suggest is to buy or build some sort of a tofu forming block but as long as you have a way of containing the tofu mm -hmm. and letting it drain you can use just about anything so what are you going to use well for i brought in my rice uh washing device oh i figure we can just line that with cheesecloth mm -hmm. and then put it in there and put a weight on top of some sort I mean, we have all of these board games and stuff around here. I'm sure we can find something. <laughs> yeah, something that's not... Maybe, hey, you know what weighs a lot? Ours are Ursa. Ursa's quite heavy. Ooh, there we go. Yeah, I'm sure Graham won't mind at all. <laughs> Bees, do you want to go get us the Ursa? Yeah. No. <laughs> I'm joking, I'm joking. I think what we'll probably end up using is just a piece of uh, a plate. Yeah, or like then, a brick. Uh, yeah, and then maybe some Spam. A, maybe a brick would be work well. I don't think the Spam's going to weigh enough. M maybe our, uh, Maybe one of our trophies. Oh, yeah, that Child's Play trophy is mega heavy. I think that would be perfect, yes. All right, use what you have. We're, we're this, is, this is like at least 10 pounds. Mm. It's quite hefty. Maybe that too hefty? I'll put that one back down. Weirdly, as I was researching recipes today, I thought, damn, you know what would make sense? Building a tofu block on Tinker Tailor. I mean, if this turns out well, maybe we can, maybe we can build a tofu block on Tinker Tailor. We have, we have uh, some, actually, we, we have some very low wooden containers mm -hmm. with low size. We could use those. Uh, I don't but they don't drain, they're do they? Bone, they're made from the bones of trees and the skins of animals. Oh, I those don't... very nice things that Wormwood sent Yeah, us. I don't think it, that Wormwood would appreciate me modifying one of their dice trays to make uh, to turn into a tofu forming block. Um, you, might... I, you could be surprised there. There could be some vegans that work mm -hmm. at Wormwood. If there's anyone out there worm, Wormwood watching, hey, if you'd like to send us a prototype tofu forming block, we would say no. Yeah. So I think it's it the outside's warm yeah, and it looks like it's foaming actually more than it was earlier like that's it's hard to tell but that foam is not going away no look at that milk under there by the way I've also brought with us a couple of glasses so that we can taste the, uh, the, the soy, soy milk. milk okay excellent mmm hot soy actually you know what I'm gonna do I'm going to be smart about using all the pieces of the tofu. Get some of that extra out of there. So do we want to like crank up the heat so it comes to a boil faster? Yeah, let's do that. Let's take it up to 150. You know what? Let's take it to maximum. No. Or 200. <laughs> it's starting to scream. Yeah, that's not okay. Hmm. Are you sure that's Celsius? Yes. Yeah. Because it says, it says it has all these temperature gauges, and at the very right-hand side, it has a little degrees C. Yeah. 200 Celsius, 400 Fahrenheit. Yeah. Because, yeah, no matter how long we leave this for, if it go, comes up to 90 degrees Celsius, it won't boil. But we don't want it to boil. So if you look, and I stir it, like, it gets, there's this... Tofu leavens or <laughs> these bean bean chunks. It has a name. Oh yeah. Okara. Okara is at least the uh, the Japanese.
king's name. What it is, has is names it, in other countries as well. Is it, does that just mean like leftover bits? Uh, you know what? I don't know the etymology of it. Hmm. But what you can do with the okara is dry it and then use it as a replacement for flour in certain, or eggs in certain baking and other dishes. How does that work? It's uh, because it's, a high, it's high in protein. Okay. It makes it uh, makes things fluffier. But like, for the for the eggs, there's sort of a leavening. Le it? Leavening and crumbling agent usually. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And okay. so this is the similar idea because it's you're, you're getting a crumbly protein. Yeah. Oh, but real gamer cow in chat says, Ian. Speaking of beans, what are your thoughts on natto? Oh, I never got into natto. What do you, yeah, have you eaten or? Not really. Okay. I might like it. I think I might like it. Uh, and Sid previously headache says, I want to mention okara is great. My mom makes soy milk all the time for the soy milk, but also for the okara. Mm -hmm. Am I saying that right? Okara? You are saying it exactly as, you, as one should. Yeah. But it's, uh, you can make stews with it. I saw pancakes and uh, brownies was the last one. Ooh, that I okara brownie. Yep. Maybe I'll take some of this home. But you you're can not, send me the brownie recipe. Yeah, you don't actually need to use much of it. You're only looking at about a half cup for a batch of brownies. Oh, okay. Yeah. Sounds like we need a natto challenge on Loading Ready Live. I mean, yeah, yeah, I would be up for that. Yeah, me too. I've, I've always wanted to try and like natto, but I could never quite get to it. What? So for those of you not in the know, natto is like a fermented soybean yes. dish, right? No, Real Gamer Cow says, eh, I made black bean vegan brownies. They were bad. So. Okay, we're starting to see some steam come off here. Oh, vegans also use the, joice, the juice from canned chickpeas as an egg substitute. That is, oh, what is that called? Aqua, it's not Aquafina, that's a wrapper. No, not Aquafaba. 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 Aquafaba is the starchy liquid from a can of chickpeas, and it will whip up like egg whites. Interesting. Yeah. I should give that a try. I, I assume it wouldn't taste much like egg whites at all. No, yeah, so natto fermented usually wrap. Ferment, I've found natto best described as just soybeans tossed in a bamboo mat, rolled up, and then thrown underneath your house for three months. Because hmm. that's actually what you do to make them. I mean, you add some culture and it is a little bit more uh, sanitary, but that's essentially what's going on. You just roll it off in a soy mat and let nature take its course. Exactly. I've heard, I saw in chat earlier before we started people saying, uh, time to ferment some tofu. Well, tofu is often referred to as fermented soybeans. There is actually no fermenting going on in this process. Yeah, this is, we're just straining out starches, essentially. Mm -hmm. Or proteins, really. There's very little starch, because we looked at the, uh, we looked at the... Um, Ingredients. Ingredient, yeah. the nutritional breakdown on the soy beverage, which is essentially what we've done here, right? Yep. Well, yeah, that's exactly what we've done here, is we've, we're, this is just this. Yeah. Is this. Yeah. But this is filtered. Yeah, this is filtered and has some, uh, has some uh, um, baking powder essentially added to it for stabilization yep. purposes. Uh, I guess because they don't want it to curdle. And yeah. Because and if yeah. you curdle it, then you get tofu. So yeah, but like, and we looked at the nutrition information, it was mostly proteins and fat, which are all good, delicious, yum. That's what you want. Yeah. So I'm going to get things ready here. <coughs> for a, a straining. So we've got a nice strainer. Yep. How long should it boil for? Uh, once we get up to a temperature, we're looking at about 20 minutes. Oh, 20 minutes. Holy crap. Oh, well, I'm glad that, yeah, this is definitely starting to get hot. Yeah. I'm starting to smell cooking beans, too. Yeah, that tells me it might be time to turn it down to the 60 level. I mean, it won't stay at a boil if it's below boiling. No, but again, we don't want it to boil because oh. we, don't, we don't want to convert the proteins through heat. Right, right, right. Okay, then let's turn it, let's turn it down then. Sorry, I thought we were simmering it for yeah. 20 minutes. The other issue is we, if we get it too hot, we're going to end up, uh, you'll end up scorching the tofu. Night right. is probably where we want it to 
be. That's just below boiling. And you don't want to scorch. Because you're going to taste that. It will taste bad. So, uh, cheesecloth. Reusable and lint free, supposedly. Uh, let's start a 20 minute timer here. So that'll take us to 10 minutes up to the hour. And I'm going to prepare a bit of cheesecloth for this straining. So we're gonna strain it through cheesecloth and then we're gonna line the, your tofu mold AKA okay, rice strainer, also with cheesecloth. Exactly. So really get all the moisture out. Yeah. What is cheesecloth, says Kitty Wolf. <laughs> cheesecloth is just a... Like a, a, like a muslin? Yeah, it's, it's sort of like a, a meshy cotton fabric. Yeah. That's, that's clean and theoretically re reusable. It's a loose weave. Yeah. Like tighter weight woven fabric. Yeah, that's a good way of putting it. Here on, uh, it's hard to tell, but like the light passes right through it. Uh, I have a question for someone who's not on camera. Do we have a set of scissors nearby? Absolutely we do. Great. It's great for making ghost costumes. Mm -hmm. Mummy outfits. So if we... Okay. I think about half of this should be f more than enough for what our purposes will be. Thank you. Woo! Yeah, so you're just, you can really use anything to strain it, but you want to get as many solids out as possible. Oh. Help me out here and get that open. There we go. There. So yeah, as you can see, this is packed, this is very diaphanous, I think is a good word yeah. to describe <laughs> cheesecloth. <laughs> That's a really good word. So do we want to fold it over like multiple times? I'm too? thinking of doing like third, three. Yeah, a third. So if we fold that back over and put it on top like that, that should give us a bag that will catch most of the the bad stuff. The the the, the bits. Yeah, and then we don't know what we don't want no crumbly bits. And then we've got enough uh, extra that we can gather up and sort of twist it and sque squeeze it out. Right, right, right. So, yeah. Yep. Put the elbow grease in. How exciting. <laughs> yeah. We should make cheese on this show. I would love to try making cheese on this show. Yeah, because apparently it's quite easy to make cheese. Hmm. I mean, it's a similar... Like a mozzarella, right? Yeah. Like okay. not some kind of like cheese that needs to age in a French cave for no. like nine months or something. <laughs> we, d we don't have the aging... I mean, we do have the, uh, the costume room, but it's not fully temperature controlled. <laughs> I mean, it's quite chilly in there, though. Like, mm -hmm. I don't know. Mm. It's mm. just dedicate one of those uh, boxes to eat, to cheese aging. Mm -hmm. now, I've I've actually got a couple recipes for queso fresco that oh. would also be worth trying. I oh, think. we should definitely try to make those. Because queso fresco is actually hard to find and expensive in British Columbia. Mm -hmm. Trouble is going to be finding the, uh, the the raw milk. I think. Yeah, I mean, there's plenty of dairy farms like a little bit off island. So we'll have to go on a trip is what you're saying. Yeah. Yeah, because you can't use homogenized milk to make cheese, unfortunately, right? Mm. Because it's been boiled to come up to a safe temperature, which breaks down the proteins that you would need to form the cheese. I, I don't know if that's the case, but I do know that one of the reasons you don't want to use processed milk is that it's ta a lot of the milk fat has been taken out. Right, of course. And that's what you're actually making the cheese from. Right, right. You can't use 2%. Yeah. I mean, you I mean, can. I'm sure you, can, you just need to use a lot of it. Well, and then, like, there's probably more fillers and, like, skim milk cheese and stuff. Yeah. Oh, basic farmer's cheese can be made with milk that's not UHT, so basic. supermarket milk says Malady Dark. Malady Dark, sorry. <laughs> uh, well, uh... Right, so... Well, you can use homogenized milk, but you need to add a starter culture to it. Oh, interesting. Er, I'm not comfortable with raw milk. People have gotten sick here on, in Ontario on that crap. But the thing is, you cook the raw milk while you're making the cheese, right? Yep. We're not drinking the raw milk. 
right? Mm -hmm. We're taking the raw milk and then we're cooking it to make it to turn into cheese. So. And raw milk is is perfectly safe as long as you're getting it from a source that you can trust. As long as you can verify that source. I mean, and it hasn't been sitting out for too long. Yes. And yeah. everything was all the containers that it went into were clean. Yeah. <laughs> really, really, a lot of our food laws are really just there to make sure that you're not to make sure that you're being safe to uh, keep you from having to pay attention to what you're doing. Yeah. Mm. I yeah. Have a bit of tofu bean skin stuck. To oh yeah, I'm spices. actually I'm actually not like a fan of, of just raw milk being available because people will get sick and die because mm. people are foolish. Hmm. I wish there was a licensing system you could get for, or, or a waiver that you could sign for those sorts of things. I mean, people would sign that waiver, though. Mm -hmm. they I would, would sign that waiver. They, yeah, but I mean, people would just show up and be like, you're buying raw milk, are you okay with this? Yeah, and then they I would mean, go that's, die. They, they did have, they did have, there's a farm out in, like, think Abbotsford that was selling raw milk yeah. and made people buy, sign a waiver for it. Yeah. Because as somebody in chat said, the moat man, the only, you can, you basically, you can never guarantee that you're going to get safe raw milk unless you live on a farm. Right. Because, yeah. yeah. I think I think the what the government has a bigger problem with is probably less with the lawsuits and more with the population killing themselves through unsafe practices. <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, it's just, it's very, very easy yeah. to introduce contamination into a large-scale production where you have lots of different cows coming from, or milk from lots of different cows coming from lots of different farms and all being brought in and men and then and then and then. That's why we homogenize milk. Long story short, now children don't die as much as they used to. <laughs> yeah, this is why I'm very, like, uh, the whole, like, food contamination thing. Any kind of, like, raw food is, like, I mean, there's always recalls going on, like, lettuces and stuff like that every, like, little while. There's the big romaine lettuce thing right now. Mm -hmm. uh, I can say that since I've stepped up my salad eating game, I have had food poisoning more in the last year than I've had in the previous, like, six. Mm-hmm. But I would I, I would wonder if that's more to do with the the way that's the way that we're eating in this country. Like this, you've had the last six months you've had food poisoning. Mm -hmm. Turns out uh, the last six months are not lettuce growing time in our area. Yeah. So. Yeah. More root vegetables, Kathleen. Some of those. Uh, yeah, pasteurized is not homogenized. Mm -hmm. Pasteurized milk is different. Louis Pasteur invented pasteurization. <gasps> And he also invented the rabies vaccine. Oh, really? Yeah. That, that, that I didn't know. I have, a, I have a book about the value of believing in yourself. And it tell, it's like, tells the cartoon illustrated story of Louis, Louis Pasteur, Pasteur, who came up with the uh, rabies vaccine. Right? Louis Pasteur was, con was a French scientist who was concerned about all the children that were dying. <sighs> it, was, it was a big thing to worry about in that time. Yeah. Now, that was the back of the days where you had to have like six kids because you wanted two of them to, get to grow to adulthood. Yeah. Sorry though, I I have to think. So it's a it's about the power of believing in yourself. Yeah, it's a really good book. Have you read it, Vish? Yeah, I used to have a copy. Is yeah. it the one with the illustration of like the little soldiers yes. and the syringe? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I had I I I, uh, I have that book, and then I was at Valley Village, and I found a whole bunch more in the same series. Yeah. So I bought a bunch of them for Penelope. Okay. And I got books on like Margaret Mead and all of these cool things, like. Like the power of imagination, the power of believing in yourself, the power of like communication. It's all the, very... the, the power of writing things down, making predictions, and then ch and then challenging yourself to try and yeah. reach that prediction. Yeah. Or if it doesn't, writing up the answers. Yeah, yeah. That's not called believing in yourself. That's called science. <laughs> well, but the thing is, is the people in the book. I don't know how much of this is true because I've never read it, like a biography <laughs> of Pasteur. Uh, they, you know, people were like, "You can't cure rabies. That's silly." And he's like, "No, I think I can." I'm gonna do experiments. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you have to also craft a narrative. Yeah, <laughs> I mean the point being. Yeah. yeah. Kid poking a dog with a frothing mouth. Yeah, I think we all had that book. Mm-hmm. Was it available in, like some sort of supermarket special display or something? Maybe it was something they were giving away at, like the doctor's offices. Maybe. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Do you think our, our milk, our soy milk, is not hot enough? I was wondering about that. Do we have a, a thermometer? We do not, unfortunately. Oh, no. Does it give you a temperature you're supposed to be holding it at? 
of the recipes I was looking at, only one mentioned a temperature. Well, at least you said recipes. Yes. <laughs> That fills me with more faith. Oh, trust me, there are so many people with so many different opinions on how to do tofu on the internet. <laughs> Vegans with opinions? <laughs> oh, that's right. A lot of them were vegan sites, too. Boil it until your crystal's clear. Oh, apparently, according to Club Neon, that was the first free sample from that book series, which is why everyone had... That would make sense. Uh, I mean, if so, if we get one of them nice thermometers and go in a in like a pot, mm -hmm. like you know what else we can make with it? Candy. candy. Yeah. Oh. We can make we can make sponge toffee. Candy. You do need to make sure that you've got a candy thermometer. Oh you yeah. Want hot liquid sugar in our office. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Because then I get to have, well, I'm not, I won't eat the hot liquid sugar, but warm liquid sugar. Yeah, maybe this year I'll actually get a chance to make caramels for Christmas on the show. Mm. Also do it with high temperature. I think what I need to do is head on down to Princess Auto because they've got a sale on their instant read uh, infrared thermometers. You will 100% need a thermometer if you want to make cheese. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Hot liquid sugar in your area, says Rio Pezio. <laughs> okay, so apparently Arclight Dynamo, according to Arclight Dynamo, selling raw milk in Canada is actually illegal. Yeah, that doesn't surprise me. Our yeah. dairy industry is very, very um, tightly uh, regulated. <laughs> Can you say cartel? I'm still angry about the cheese thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, cheese is very expensive in Canada mm -hmm. because of our dairy industry. And the protectionism behind it. So is that foamy? Not really. It's no, no more foamy than it was. The yeah, foam seems thicker. It is definitely not foaming over, but it is maintaining that foam a lot longer than most liquids I know. Yeah. Also, I don't think Boston Pizza Pizza costs $30 a pizza because the cheese is too expensive. <laughs> because you can, you can go to Domino's or Pizza Hut or whatever, and you can get up. You can do that in Canada, and they have to be buying Canadian cheese, too. I don't think they're importing it across the border. Nope, can't. Oh, Rock Pusher says, you want to monopolize protectionist dairy industry? Come to New Zealand. I didn't know, one, Rock Pusher, I didn't know you're from New Zealand. Two, New Zealand has much better dairy products than Canada, so I feel like it's kind of like... Kind of like, well, at least your cartel gives you really top tier stuff. Uh, you know, Bubby Roses uh, used to import all their butter from New Zealand because it was the best butter they could get. Did not know that. Bubby Roses is a very good uh, Jewish bakery in town, mm. and they make very good food. But they they had to like they 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 stopped, and they now they import it when they can get it, but it's hard to get it, yeah. right? But that's why their pies are like thirty dollars because okay. they're made with like a pound of New Zealand butter. New Zealand imported butter. I mean, yeah. I could see their uh, their cheese also being pretty good too, because they've definitely got a lot more. Oh, their cheese is a phenomenal. Yeah, a, a lot more caves there, I guess. I just like high, <laughs> it's re like really high quality. Oh, I have a funny story for Go you. Go mining for cheese. Uh, my dad, because he used to live in New Zealand, I was mm -hmm. born in New Zealand, was flying out of New Zealand. I don't know where, but he uh, he was. They were serving him food, and then the lunch came out, and it was Air New Zealand. And they said, we do wish to apologize. The butter and cheese are from America. <laughs> That's... You may not find them. And people were, and my dad was like, yeah, they were legitimately gross. Wow. Compared to what he was used to. That is lovely. All right. Thinking of preparing a second pan here, because we're going to need one for the actual coagulation. Oh, really? I mean, we could probably use the same pot, but it's going to be full of gunk when we get there. So thankfully we have these other pots. I need to go back a moment to New Zealand having a lot of caves. You know they're like a modern country, right? Well, yes. <laughs> you put cheese in caves to age them. It's, it's I mean, you don't have to. Like, we have temperature control. Yeah, yeah. We like have in, technology. In Silver Spoon, they had that, like, cheese basement in, underneath the shack that you go down into. <laughs> that's, that's true. That's Gin no Saji. That's an anime we're talking about, and not Silver Spoon, that like, weird, like, um, 1980s sitcom. 
Yeah. yeah. I didn't. I didn't. It's important to make that distinction. Yes. They are not the same thing. Yeah. <laughs> Just in case, because I was like, I know what she's talking about, but wait. Beach, some of our audience might not. Have cheese basements. Sorry. Does, does the other silver spoon have a cheese? Basement? It does not have a cheese basement at all. But it probably has like a wine cellar. If you haven't seen that anime, it's very nice. It's very relaxing. Mm -hmm. Like, if you just need to be like, I need to watch something. And if you want to learn things about microbes and food, it's a great resource for that, too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, the, the reason I'm suggesting caves is that uh, we do have temperature control in this day and age. Yeah. But caves are naturally temperature controlled, so you don't have to spend money on HVAC systems yeah, and, yeah. and such. Also, like, caves have given us all the best cheese that wasn't supposed to be like that, <laughs> right? <laughs> Random microbes coming in and people being like, oh, this is actually delicious. Yeah. Let's learn how to inject it directly. Yeah. All right, I'm finding out things about soy milk. I thought this was going to really? be- Really? Couple, Couple of Fishermen says Gino Saji is by uh, the same guy who did Full Metal Alchemist. Woman. So that tracks. Same woman? Yeah. Oh. Yeah, she, she, lived, uh, she lived in Hokkaido growing up. And that's why she did Ginosaji after she did Full Metal Alchemist. As like a cool down? Kind of as a thing. Is like, there's so much about my life in Hokkaido that I never talked about. Because she did a three, she did a, th I've, I've read three chapters of a volume she did just on living on the farm. Oh, before wow. she did all this other work. And then she's like, I got to revisit this because there's a lot going on here. But now she's on break and she's not continuing yet. Oh. Yeah, we got to wait until the rest of it comes out. She grew up on a dairy farm. Yeah. Wow, amazing. Good for her. I gotta say, I like Ginokaji or whatever. It's Ginosaji, yeah. Ginosaji a lot better than Full Metal Alchemist. Yeah. <laughs> Full Metal Alchemist is very dramatic. Very. <laughs> There's a lot of big feelings in that. It's just like, what if you eat egg and rice very early and it's satisfying? <laughs> this is really Ian and Kathleen talk shit while we went from milk to boil. It's isn't it? unfortunate that we sometimes those are the recipes we have to deal with. I mean, Relaxing. This is like our own episode of Silver Spoon. Yeah. <laughs> Slow food movement here. A lot of people are recommending uh, Moyashimon. That's fun. Hey, Kathleen. Yeah. You want to watch Moyashimon? <laughs> What's it about? I have a T-shirt. Uh, it's about a <laughs> college student who, had, uh, while he was a kid, discovered that he could see microbes, and he sees them as little like anthropomorphized versions of themselves so he doesn't really know what they actually look like right. but he ends up joining a, much like, like like an agricultural school and the series is about food fermentation yeah. and also that sounds fantastic Corey it, it is it is also about uh, winning a giant contest uh, at the school over the course of four goddamn episodes and not talking about microbes at all I was a little disappointed that there was this giant obstacle course thing going on at the school festival I'm like I want to get back to talking about fermentation I want people to chew rice and spit it in a pot. Yeah, it also takes like a huge like right turn with the cross dressing. Yes. Yes. Yeah. In like a respectful way or like a making fun of people. Like way? a You've probably never seen this before. Discovering yeah. Yeah. Discovering that someone you know has an alternative side and just be like, Whoa, what is this? But it's like late in the series. Interesting. Yeah. It catches it catches every viewer who watches it off guard. I did not see it coming at all. I was like, well, that's, I didn't see that coming. How is that part of the, the story? It just, because it just is mm. a thing. It's not like, it's not part of the story. It's just a thing. Well, the Moat Man also brings up Tampopo while, while we're on the topic of Japanese media related to food. Yeah. Oh, and Asda's, Asta28 says, I just want to say thank you for Tinker Tailor Solar Fry. It lets me think of a project to do and have company while working on them. Thanks so much. This is the all, everybody let's try. We just happen to be let's trying it here for you. Yeah. And thanks, Asda, for the compliment. I mean, what's the, like, the, the, the neat thing about this is, like, how much did the cheesecloth cost you? Like, five bucks? That was probably the most expensive single purchase in this. And, like, you had all the other strainers and stuff. It's not like yeah. you went out and bought stuff. Maybe the Nagari. Oh, yeah. The, but na the Nagari is kind of expensive. I so. think we're using a table... Uh, one and a half teaspoons of this, so this is the sort of thing that will last forever. Yeah, you can make tofu for the rest of your life, essentially. So, like, I feel like this is like a $15 project. Yeah, this is a very inexpensive process. The image of soybeans you posted for the tweet for the show has been marked as sensitive material and hidden by default. <laughs> Hot soybeans in your area, says oh, MTV wow. CDM. Thanks, I, Paul. I guess those soy boys are just a little bit too, uh... 
too hot bit, for Twitter. A little bit too smooth and a little bit too moist. Well, the soybeans were quite tender. Yeah. <laughs> Says Blasphemer. Uh, yeah, this is a, uh, yeah. So, but yeah, you said about $3 of the soybeans, of which we are using half. Mm-hmm. Uh, we've got, well, we're going to say all the pots are washed. You can probably find strainers. And if not, you can go to like a thrift store, okay. like a Value Village or a, a Goodwill or something like that and find something that you can strain with. Mm -hmm. You know, you don't need stainless steel bowls. You could use literally anything. And you I've probably seen, have a stove. I've seen a few other techniques that can be used for getting more out of the, uh, making it easier to get the moisture out. Mm. I've seen people suggest taking a, uh, like a little metal sieve like this, pushing it in and then scooping liquid out directly before you go about pouring it in. Interesting, because we want the milk, not the fiber. Exactly. Not the bits. That's but the, what is that again? The okara? The okara, yes. Mm. And I think we're just going to dump here. That makes things easy. Okay, we're, I think that takes us to the 20 minute mark. We could definitely do a bread baking episode, says Edsbear95. Oh, yes. Because we could do like one of the no need breads mm -hmm. uh, that basically, but they got to rest. So we could do the kneading, and then we could put, we could literally like, but here's one I've prepared earlier. Yep. Because the thing is, the kneading is one thing, but the bread has to sit and rise. Because if you don't let the bread rise, I saw a recipe that was going around for like instant bread, and the crust quality on it looked so bad. Oh, yeah, no. It's going to be so bad. All right. I think we're ready. Uh, do you want to dump? Which would you prefer? Do you want to dump or strain, Ian? Uh, I, you know what? If you're okay with dumping, I can hold the the cheesecloth in place. All right. You want to take that spoon out just so it doesn't splatter up and like hit you or anything? Yep. Let's do it. Okay. Ready, Beige? Go ahead. Yep. Yeah. Just go, go. Yes. Just throw that back on the, the stove there. The heat, that's the nice thing about induction is that the heat is gone. The heat stops when we turn it off. So if you look now, you can see we've got <coughs> a lot of soy Avocata, bits. Yeah. And uh, you know what? You know what this reminds me of smell-wise? It smells familiar, but what? Cream of wheat. Oh, yeah. That's what I'm getting from that. Yeah, it does smell sort of starchy. Tilt it towards me. Sure, let's get that just a little bit. Yeah. It, it's hard to see because it's like white on white. It sure is blown out, yeah. Okay, yep. sorry. All right. So, um, what we're going to do now is gather this up into a ball and then twist it. Hey, that's quite effective. While trying to not touch this hot mass of stuff. Of Ooh. molten soy. Yeah. Here, how about I hold this up so you don't like wring your soybeans out and then immediately re-dunk them well, actually, into the... If I may. Yeah? Take this and take this. put that on top of the pot. The strainer. Great. And just set it down. Hold on. And what I'm gonna do now. <laughs> is I'm going to toss this in here. Oh, that looks quite smooth. Yeah. And then I'm going to use this and bring it back and just grind out the rest of it. How hot is that? Eh, not, so not that hot. Okay. I mean, it's a little hot. The steam is hotter than the actual in ingredients. We can twist that a lot more. It's, see, it's slightly too hot to hold on to. <laughs> so if I push that there. Yeah. We just there we are. Keep twisting until it. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, because the beans aren't hot, but they've got a lot of hot steams trapped in them, which is even too much for my asbestos hands. Uh, whew. All right, I think we're getting close to end game there. All right. Okay, so how yeah. do I use this okara? Do I fry it up? 
So yeah, what you're going to do is take it home, spread it out onto a baking sheet mm -hmm. with some uh, parchment paper or whatnot, and put it like on in your oven on low, like low, low, low. Like 200 or something? Yeah, like as low as it can go, maybe even 160 if you can get that. There and are that... recipes available online. Yep. And then once you get that, uh... that was a lot of... Yeah, that was a lot of extra soy milk we got. All right. And then uh, while, while it's drying, every 10 minutes or so, just give it a, uh, a stir to keep it from burning or sticking to anything. Interesting. Okay, the other thing I'm going to do here is take a little bit of this. Oh, because you want to try it. Yep, just enough for us to sample. That seems good. So, I mean, like, if you just want your own soy milk and you want to make sure that it's, like, because, like, if you buy, like, organic, non-GMO soy milk, it's incredibly expensive. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, but this, these, you said that you got organic, like, fancy soybeans. Soybeans. Because that was the only thing that was available. And, th and that was, like, $3. And there's a lot of soy milk here, so mm -hmm. you could just make your own soy milk. They were three fifty. yeah. So, you want to give this a sip? Sure. It's Actually. warm as a hearty beverage. And just for fun, I'm also going to pour us a little bit of the real, or the real stuff. Yeah, I mean that's soy milk, all right. It tastes like soy milk. Okay. How's that? Hmm. This is... I mean, they're warm and cold, which ex which changes the way that yeah. you experience the flavor. But this one is slightly grassy. With a, a round flavor. This one is thinner tasting, but better, I think. Lighter. Oh, yeah. No, this tastes... Yeah, this has that, uh, that... This tastes like fresh cut grass. This tastes like dried uh, straw. This one definitely has a more, this one is like, it might be the warmness of it, but this one tastes nuttier to me. Hmm. Let me see. A little sweeter, a little nuttier. Yeah, y yes. Yeah, fresher. Just fresher, like just fresher, nuttier, sweeter, mm -hmm. and a little less like. Let's set that aside. Green. Let that come to uh, room, room temperature. Let, let, have them both at the same temperature. But yeah, if you yeah. just want to make soy milk, there you go. We've just made soy milk. What well, is like a three for one this show? <laughs> yeah. So next step, I'm just going to bring up my various instructions here. All right. So we've curdled the soy milk. Ne next step is to curdle the soy milk. How exciting. Okay. So. That's actually pretty damn good for for the soy milk. I like the warm soy milk. Yeah. Can you imagine that with a little bit of cinnamon? Oh, that would be nice. And like maybe some like spices and cinnamon, honey and cardamom. Stuff. Ooh, cardamom. Yep. Yeah. Start to make a little uh, a little soy chai latte. Delicious. Yeah. You know, what I'm going to suggest here at this point that we go on a break three minutes early, uh, and get ready for part two, where we actually make the tofu itself. I'm so excited. So I'm so excited. Don't go away. There's going to be more Tinker Tailor Solder Fry and more tofu. Wait, wait, let's give him a soy boy look. After this. Welcome back to Tinker Tailor Solder Fry, where we are cooking tofu from scratch. And I'm eating almonds because it's dinner time. It's time for more uh, legume or nut-based food. Pro tip, give a bag of almonds on hand. They're always good. Mm -hmm. So the next step in making the tofu is to bring the milk back up to temperature, which means heating it to a simmer until tiny bubbles start to form on the surface. And they were very tiny, at which point you're going to want to turn the heat down to low and simmer it for about five minutes. You can see the bubbles are extremely tiny that are that had formed and now have stopped forming. Just 
probably good. You don't want to scorch it, eh? Exactly. You want to be very careful not to scorch your milk. Because that's just going to ruin that nice, fresh flavor. We don't want that. Yes, from scratch, I say, Rock Pusher. And fourthism. Before the break, we took pre-soaked soybeans, ground them up in a blender, and then uh, cooked them in another pot before straining them using a cheesecloth. And honestly, this worked great. Me and Ian had the almond milk, and, or the soy milk, and we thought it both, both of us thought it tasted very good, actually. Mm -hmm. So if you want to just make a non-dairy milk substitute and not pay out the butt, because uh, they tend to be quite pricey, uh, this has a very limited shelf life. I think you were going to talk about that a little bit, Ian? Yes. How long do you think this would keep for? Soy milk, from all the research I've been doing, soy milk keeps for only about two to three, three to four days in the, when refrigerated, because there are no preservatives in this. This is just straight raw bean juice. Well, it's not raw, but... Yeah, but it is straight bean juice. Yeah. And so it's going to spoil a little bit sooner than other things in your fridge you might be used to. Mm -hmm. And that goes as well for the tofu that we'll be making. This is definitely... Uh, make it on maybe Sunday, Use some on Sunday night, use it on Monday, use it on Tuesday. Wednesday, probably just throw out any leftovers. Make it when you're, gonna, when you're ready to use it. Alternately, you could make it and cook it in a sauce. Like, just make it and then cook it all at once. Mm -hmm. uh, and then the leftovers, the cooked, properly cooked leftovers, should keep as long as leftovers keep in your fridge, which I think extends the life to maybe four to five days, depending on what it's cooked with. Yeah. Ooh, okay. Sit down here. I think we've got two more minutes left on the five-minute timer. Right, do you want me to stir for a Please. bit? Please. Yes, thank you. That's exactly... Wow, I have an assistant. Yes. I'm helping. <laughs> All right, and this is where we're going to get start getting into the coagulation. This I'm really legit excited about. Mm -hmm. And I think I might give you a different spoon, actually, too, once that starts. For the coag? Yeah, so that the, uh, so that the curds don't get stuck in between the slots of that spoon. Not a bad idea. Ian, yeah. you've thought of everything. <laughs> I try. Sometimes it works. Okay. Mm. Uh, hey, B, or hey, Ian. Sorry, I was looking. I, That's uh, okay. It's, it's, my name keeps coming up in chat for no reason. Yeah. Uh, yeah, there's a lot of beige juice references. Ian, where did you find your soybeans after hunting around for them? Weirdly, it was at uh, Fairway. Fairway, which is sort of an Asian-style supermarket. The problem is I had to go to two fairways, because the fairway I was at was sold out. So were they, like, dried? Yes. Okay, yeah. so they were dried. Like, shelf-stable, you bought a bag off it, like, yeah. off, uh, like a center aisle kind of thing. Yeah, just a, a small bag, 400 grams, which works out to about uh, two cups, I believe. No, four cups of full-size. A cup's not. Inflated. Uh, That's what it means. Uh, yeah. A cup is a measure of volume, right? I know. This is why I, all the recipes that I was looking at deal in cups, but they were sold in grams, and that's... Thankfully, there are conversion tables out there that convert from dry soybeans to wet cups, or dry grams to wet volume. Hmm. Yeah. Oh, right. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, Cuttlefish Man is putting out a link to soy milk powder. I guess that would work. Soy milk powder. I've heard that soy milk powder is, again, not necessarily the greatest use. I think try to find your fresh soybeans. Find an Asian market somewhere in your area. Order them online, probably, you could get them. Yeah. Well, I think what we're going to do here is we're going to actually see... I, some of the recipes warned against using soy milk. So that's what we're going to do. Is once this batch is done... We're going to test. While it's pressing out. We're going to make another batch using this. It's a defatted soy flour. I think the fat is important to tofu. That's, fat is protein. And so there'd be no... No, it blood. isn't. No, that's the opposite what? of what it is. That's right. <laughs> but I don't think a defatted thing would work as well. Because mm -hmm. if nothing else, fat adds flavor. Oh, good. We need a lid. Is that the right size? Yes, it is. Good. Uh... All right. And the coagulant is going to be... So 
So we're just waiting for that to cool down just a bit. Did you turn it off? Yes. Ah. So I'm just stirring for no reason then. No, no, we do want to stir that to, again, help it cool down just a bit. <sighs> How far is this from being ice cream? Very far. Okay. Impossibly far away. <laughs> I mean, with a lot of sugar, yeah, and some churning and some ice, yeah, maybe, maybe, but it has such a low fat content. I saw a, uh, I saw, I was watching another anime, where in it the girl was like, "I'm just gonna make some, so, uh, some ice cream out of this tofu," and then later just served it, and I'm like, "Don't do that, because that sounds impossible to me. <laughs> I don't know how you would have done that." I'm assuming it's just like. I made a chilled dessert that is not actually ice cream. Yeah. 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 I, I realize that uh, bulk barn might be more accessible to people in Canada, but I think I would just try to find. You could probably buy dry soybeans online. Yeah. I don't think I found. I, I think I looked at bulk barn and I didn't actually see any, which is why I was I ended up going to the fairway. <sighs> there we go. That's what we want. One point five teaspoons. Which is funny because Loblaws owns Bulk Barn and they own TNT Supermarket, and you'd think they'd be able to offer those things through, like if you could buy a TNT uh, branded you know, bag, you know right? What I really wish that we could have yeah. a, TNT? a TNT. Wouldn't that be nice? TNT is a Asian supermarket that is uh, also in all sorts of places in Canada, but not Victoria. No, it got bought out by Loblaws about seven or eight years ago, and. Which was great because it's like that should expand where all their products are available. Except, it kind of hasn't. Mm -hmm. There's some there's some stuff that's TNT brand you can get at, at the superstore here in Victoria, but it's not like you can get all sorts of Asian food. But then again, I'm sure they're also just judging the market. They're like, oh, there's probably not that much call for that. We need to get more British foods. So it's recommended that we mix this in using where'd my water thing go? There it is. The uh... dissolving it in water to begin with. Interesting. So we're just going to do that in the spoon. So adding a little bit of liquid's okay? Yeah. And then we're just going to ladle that in, give it a little stir. And then take that out and cover this up for, I believe, two minutes or so. All right. So, so steam is escaping because this is like... Yeah, that'll be... that's fine. Interesting. So now we leave it alone and wait for the magic to happen. Mm -hmm. And then we'll add a bit more. So... So it's interesting. There's no Asian supermarkets here, but literally every supermarket has a British food section. Our Walmart has a British food section in the, in, in the supermarket part. Wow. Our Walmart. It's, that, that tells you how big the, uh, the, the British food demand is in Victoria. Yeah. Like, e even our tiny... That was the magnesium chloride. You added one and a half teaspoons. I add, yes. So a teaspoon is five mils. Oh, so you wait. added seven and a half mils. I added, how much did I add there? I added one and a half of that, which is. That's, that's not enough. Nope, that is not enough at all. So we need another half of that. And that brings us to one and then a half. Okay. Oh, and that's gonna. We're gonna add that back in a second, actually. Do we want to put some water in there with it? Yes, I do, because you can see. Actually, if we can get the, uh, the camera on it. Hang on. You can see just from the the. Oh, this is gonna be impossible to see. You can see a little bit. Of, no, it's yeah. showing up. Okay, so you see that like white scummy bit? That is the stuff that was left over on the spoon from the t from the soy milk, and see how it's gotten stringy because it's congee because it's because it's there we are there we are got there good it's curdling it's curdling we are curding there we go so do i add this or should we wait the two minutes let's wait uh we're gonna need another two minutes yeah on the i'm yeah. holding a spoon of water and coagulant <laughs> ama yeah we for those of you trying to do the the conversions at home we have these handy little uh teaspoon or measuring spoons here that have both the milliliters 
and the imperial measurements on them. Or common measurements, I guess. Mm. I'm Ortho says, I just moved to Victoria from Vancouver. For Pacific City, this town is so very white. That's just all of our immigrants are from the UK. Oh, yeah. But, like, I think Grimm's mentioned this in a blog. He grew up in Oak Bay where, like, they have a joke that if you go behind Oak Bay, you're, you're going behind the Tweed Curtain. Yes, because the old curtain. British people from the 1980s made that joke. When the Iron Curtain was still a thing. Ooh. But it was, there was that many, that many British expats in the area. It means we have good access to Tim Tams, though. Oh, we have so many Tim Tams here. But still, keep sending us Tim Tams, because oh, yeah, I'm okay with free Tim Tams. <laughs> we will always eat your Tim Tam. Whoa, an Australian tablespoon is different to an international tablespoon? I recently learned that... What's, what's the difference? That I don't remember. <laughs> Which are, is it bigger? Smaller? Does it have, like, six King Gizzard albums? <laughs> like... uh, ask Siri. Mm. Hey Siri, how many milliliters in one Australian tablespoon? Milliliters in Australian dollars are not compatible. Okay. Oh, it's 20 milliliters, not 15. Wow. Huh. So it's like a Texas measurement. So it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's one and a third <laughs> tablespoons. Hmm. That explains why Australian people are so robust. I, say, I wonder why. Well, that's incredibly confusing. Pepper Slavin, that's not a tablespoon, that is a tablespoon. Hey, it's a tablespoon. I've seen you play the Aussie Spoonie before. <laughs> All right, let's put that in and go ahead and give it a stir. Yeah, because there ain't nothing happening here. Ain't no curdling going on. But if you only added half the liquid, that's probably why. Put the lid back on. And wait five minutes. And I'll wait five minutes now. Mm-hmm. Then the curds should be ready. Wait, are you supposed to do it in two batches? Yes. Oh. Oh, so it's one and a half teaspoons divided but in two? Yes. Oh, so you do like... Three quarters of a teaspoon. Oh, three quarters of a teaspoon. It's like... Five milliliters. Or, no, wait. it's like four point yeah. something. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. Oh, my God. Who does three quarters? I guess you can have a quarter teaspoon measure. Mm. And there's three, that, three and then three. Yeah, hopefully the all the proteins are fine in there. We'll get some nice folding going on here. <laughs> Serafina, witchcraft, cooking, science. Mm. Cooking is science. I know, it's chemistry. Mm -hmm. I'm so excited to try this tofu. I'm the soy milk was really good. Mm -hmm. Oh, hey. Oh, oh yeah. we're killing time. Let's do a resample now that one is, we got a room temperature and yep, a, These are both room-ish temperature now. All right, so this is the one that we made, and mm -hmm. this is the one from the store because the glass is warm here. So give it a good swish. Yep. Look at the legs on that. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it does have some pretty amazing legs. Wow. Ooh. Mm. Now that that's cooled down, it's got a little bit more bitterness. And that tastes like tofu. This tastes oh. exactly like tofu. Now um, that it's room temperature, it yeah. tastes like drinking tofu. That has a bit of bitterness, but it's, mm, ooh, it's a rounder flavor. And yeah. This is, it's like the difference between, if you ignore the taste, it's like the difference between drinking homogenized milk and skim milk. This is, actually, I know that we talked about how this had a nuttier flavor when it was warm. Now that it's cool, it has a grassier flavor than that. Mm -hmm. And this is just flat. Yeah. Yeah, this tastes like liquid tofu, which is essentially what it is. Mm -hmm. And this tastes like a... <sighs> it just tastes like fresher tofu. Yeah, like a tofu milk almost. Yeah, yeah. It, it doesn't taste watery. Mm -hmm. I think you put the heat up too high while you're cooking the mush. Oh, no. Who is, uh, it's just... That says Fraun 81. I mean, we'll see what happens, right? Like, if the science does not bear out, then you will know. Mm -hmm. That's okay. If it, this doesn't work, we have a backup that we can do with just the straight up soy milk. Exactly. I mean, it's, it's a let's try program. We mm -hmm. might not succeed. 
mean, that's okay. Yeah, it's happened once before. What, ha what is that when you lit the moon base on fire? N no, that was actually the pizza day, and that was 100% success. Except for the fire, yeah, which the, was a minor setback went, only. The fire was contained. The fire was contained. <laughs> and then you took it out of the containment and mm -hmm. walked around the moon base with it. It was <laughs> contained on it. it was, as long as it didn't go up, which I know is where fire wants to go. But it can't because it's it's contained within the, the thing that's combusting. Mm. Um, so what was your failure then? I can't remember. It was one of the recent... Shows. It was the. Uh, was it trying to connect two unworking laptops into one working laptop? No, Beach actually succeeded completely in that. Oh. Yeah, I think it was it was uh, this the the uh, project I was working on on the side of that. Strangely, yeah. Not the Dreamcast. Weren't you working on the pedals beside you're, that? Because you got the, the pedals to work. Yeah, you're right. The pedals eventually did end up working. The joysticks are fine so far. Mm-hmm. Um. Yeah, the Dreamcast, how's that going? It's, oh. Oh, it's the light. We were working on the overhead light. Yes, that's right. The, uh, one of the, uh, the broken overhead floods. Oh, right, 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 right. Ones. And, yeah, I made the, I made the gray smoke come out. Yeah, that, that was its soul escaping. Yes. Now, now it is no more. That was, I mean. If you were to raise it, it would just be some sort of shambling light zombie. It wouldn't have, the, it wouldn't have the spark <laughs> of life. <laughs> Uh, the Dreamcast, though, as you mentioned, is, we're close. In fact, it's probably going to be the next episode that we have on the show. Oh! Because I just finally got all the parts I need to complete it. Good Lord, please let that be the end of that. All right, I think it's time. It's been five minutes. First, have a look. Mm. I don't see a single curd. No, nor do I. So we may have taken things too hot. Is that a thing that if it goes too hot, we'll break the proteins down? That is the way that proteins work. Interesting. But, hmm. but I mean, the thing. Okay, Ian, go with me on this journey. Mm -hmm. What if we just add, since it didn't work and we follow the directions, what if we just add a lot more of the curdling agent and not dilute it? That's exactly. Thinking. Yeah. Don't leave me hanging. Laura. I'm sorry. <laughs> the uh, thing is, it worked when we it worked. There was a little bit of uh, there was a little bit of like protein stuff going on in the spoon. Do you want to give me uh, another squirt of that? Sure. Let's do two of those. Right, because you can see the curdling starting there. Yeah, I think maybe we just didn't add enough. Let's just put that in slightly. Oh yeah, there it goes. I can't see it. Thank you. That's definitely curdling. Mm-hmm. I'll just give it a stir. Commit. Oh, I see some. I do see some curds happening. Like it's impossible because we're looking at like white on white on white yeah. here for the camera. Okay. See, this is the, I, I appreciate your measurement because you know what I would have done. Just glonk. <laughs> it's already failed once. Like I can't, I can't make it more fail. And I. Uh, oh, that's definitely starting to curdle now. Things are you happening. See, all right, let's put the lid back yep. on. Give it another five minutes. <sighs> let's have another chat, Ian. Yeah. So, one of the things about uh, the one of the other pieces of information that I managed to get out of the research that I was doing mm -hmm. today on this was that. Not every nagari is created equal. Some people have trouble with the with the various nagaris that they find getting the, their tofu to to coagulate, and I think that might be what's happened here. Interesting. Like some are more. I mean, there's only one ingredient. Mm -hmm. What's Magnesium the concentration? Chloride. That and that's that's a good question. It, there, there's it's not listed on. Right, because obviously it's not straight magnesium chloride. In mm -hmm. fact, like this isn't poisonous. You're supposed to be just able to take it, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's quite salty, oh. but it's not terribly bitter. Hmm. Okay. For bitter salt. I'm so it might just try. be a little bit watered down. That could, and that might make sense. Ian, there's a message for you in the chat from Xantos69, who gave us 250 bits, saying, uh, 
The bits are for you introducing them to you sous vide. I just ate a pulled pork sandwich that I made myself, cooked it for over 24 hours, and it was life-changing. Oh, 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 that sounds amazing, Xantos. Thank you for those bits, and thank you for that compliment. I hope you enjoy your sous vide life. Mm. Arc Lake Dynamo says, as I understand it, nagari is made by boiling down seawater and removing the sodium chloride, so it's probably not an exact science. Hmm. I, I, I think what's probably going on is that it's, they're, it's boiled down. This is probably made in a factory from mm -hmm. magnesium chloride salt, like mm -hmm. the actual crystals. But yeah, it's definitely watered down. It's not like terribly bitter. No. Hmm. Interesting. I want to keep looking at this. Uh, I want to keep watching the tofu and see if it's curdling. Mm -hmm. If it doesn't curdle to my satisfaction, like how curdled should it be? Oh, it should be, it, it should be... Like clumpy? Yeah. Ian. We're not getting there, are we? We're barely getting there. Can I do something reckless? You bet you can. Oh, boy. Oh, God. Y'all oh. ready for this? Well, it's just because it's like kind of like a drippy lid. Yeah. That's all. I'm... You're going to... Yeah, let's put it in there. Okay, and then let's slowly add it in. Oh, just quickly. Rip that band-aid off. Yep, just... What's the worst that could happen? I'm a very free chef. Yeah, the, yeah. I, invo I, I, believe, I believe in adding things uh, freely. Which works great if you've been cooking for a lot of years and you have a good idea of how things taste together and, and, and the sort of the, the basic chemistry that backs up most cooking. And is a little, uh, a little worrisome <laughs> for people who don't cook as much. And it's just like, what are you doing? I don't know. <laughs> Do you have a recipe? No. I'm with you though, Serafina. This is, oh, hey, those are lumpies. Those are some lumpy boys. All right, should we let it sit again? Yeah, why not? Let it sit for another five minutes and hope that works. Okay, yeah, we've, we've added a lot. We have we have definitely stepped into uh, witchcraft territory and out of science. But we had a pinch of newt. <laughs> yeah, a pinch is a very quantified amount. Real gamer cow says, "Oh yeah, it, it, this is an image of curdled soy milk about to go into tofu form. Yeah, yes. that's what we want it to look yes. like. Yes, ours does not. Ours has some curds in it. If this doesn't work, mm -hmm. I'm going to add a lot of." This. Yeah, no, I, that's fair. How much was this bottle? Uh, three or four bucks. Oh, yeah. I wouldn't worry about, yeah, I wouldn't worry about wasting it. Yeah, you, oh, Zerg539 says, you have two variables with your tofu experiment. The amount of protein in the soy milk and the molarity of the magnesium chloride, so things might be a bit of in the realm of guesstimation. Especially with not knowing the concentration of either. Yeah. Not to mention the other aspect of of the heat of the uh, the heat of the mixture to begin with. Yeah, we've I not we you you've been a brave co-pilot on this, but I have charged forward with too much abandon maybe. Eh. Yeah. I mean, how are you supposed to know how to make tofu? You've never done it before. Exactly, and we'll be and, one step closer today. And many of the recipes were vague. Mm -hmm. Oh, Banrail says a hundred. Uh, with 100 bits says, as someone who has trouble making toast correctly, I appreciate this alchemy. <laughs> Science. Baking is black magic. No, baking. Baking is 100% is chemistry. Yeah. Baking is very, you cannot fuck around with your, with your baking recipes the same way you can do with cooking recipes. You add a little bit more liquid to like a soup, it's just a watery, or, it's just more watery. Yep. You add a bit of salt, oh, it's a little salty, right? Like baking, you start changing the proportions of egg to flour and stuff like that, or like leavening agents, you could just throw off the whole thing. Actually, the weird thing is baking is this, is this wonderful uh, marriage of science and, oh, not science, chemistry and biology. Yeah. Like the thing is baking, people are like, yeah, yeah, bake, see, baking, the ratios of flour, of your dry ingredients to your oils, to mm -hmm. your liquids, to your leaveners, those are, can dramatically change. What you can fuck around with in baking is seasonings, yep. spices, additions such as yeah. nuts, chocolate, that kind of thing. Well, that doesn't really change anything. Even the manual manipulation can be a, a big problem in baking. Uh, How much what, you need things. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Throw it off into a, yeah, like muffins being dried because you've overworked the batter. 
and you've stretched out the gluten, so they're all like chewy and glutinous. But um, oh, glutens. Um, but yeah, like uh, yeah, I just learned with my cookie making that the importance of the sugar to butter butter ratio. What you're, what you're, well, what you're changing when you fuck around with your baking, like fundamentals of the baking recipe, is the texture, the moisture level, the crispness, the crumb, like the actual physical like construction of the good. Mm -hmm. Yeah. As you're fundamentally transforming something as, it, as the heat is added mm -hmm. and you need to have all the ingredients in the correct in the correct place at the correct time at the correct temperature mm -hmm. let's have a look so there's more curds it's definitely getting curdier how was that five minutes close i'd give it another hit Look away. No. Whoa. I mean, if it doesn't, yeah. If it doesn't work. Also, that looked like a lot, but it was probably maybe two tablespoons. Yeah. I'm a pretty good eyeball measurer. After many years of doing it. Keep in mind, you should have some of that around for when you try the soy beverage just on its own. Oh yeah, we're not going to be using that whole bottle. That's yeah. for certain. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. So make. Yeah. Mark it 7.30 is when we start. Let's go five minutes and see what it... Yeah. Uh, the other thing that you need to be aware of is altitude affects your baking. Yeah. It affects a lot of things. So uh, things... I mean, we're at sea level here, so it's pretty straightforward. Um, but if you're, if you're following a recipe that was developed in, say, Denver, you might want to keep an eye on that oven. Oh. And you might not want to cook it for as long. The, the Mile High City? Yeah, yeah. Uh, So an eggless, butterless, milkless cake. That would be probably a vinegar-raised cake, I imagine, mm -hmm. that Anorin is. Because you can do a vinegar and baking soda raised cake, which yes. I've made before, and they're fine. Well, I mean, the, uh, baking soda and any uh, any acid mm -hmm. is going to do it. Cream of tartar. Yeah. Yep. Cream of tartar also. You know what, uh, you know what uh, baking powder is? It's cream of tartar and cream, baking soda. Yeah. Yeah. The, you know what? The, the bake, it was revolutionary just because you didn't have to buy two things and mix them together. Yeah. <laughs> Magic. So, so right on the label. So that's why people are like, oh, you need baking soda and baking powder to bake. If, if you don't need, and I know I said don't fuck around with it, but if you don't have both, <laughs> you can, uh, you t if you don't have baking powder, because you do want the cream of tartar, because what that is is a stabilizer. Uh, but if you don't have baking powder and baking soda, you could probably just add a little bit of extra baking powder and you're okay. Probably safe. Oh, Seraphina says you're 100% correct. Baking soda and vinegar in that recipe. There we go. Two minutes in, three minutes remain. Dawn of the second tofu. <laughs> I'm excited and still apprehensive. I'm also surprised that self-raising flour isn't more common in Canada. Uh, I mean, self-raising flour is flour and baking powder. Yeah, it, it, it is common i just don't know anyone that uses it because it's less versatile yeah than... because you can't use it for like a roux yeah. or biscuits i mean you could use it for biscuits but you know what i mean like uh, you can't use it for like bread cake pizza basically everything i use my flour for yeah i i yeah uh, I'm, I'm not a fan I, I can just buy some baking powder and buy a five dollar bottle of baking powder and have it for nine years. <laughs> mm. Mungo Dude makes an interesting point that the water on Mount Everest boils at 72 degrees Celsius. Mm. So some good some green the, tea. Because the altitude's so high mm -hmm. and the atmosphere is so thin. Perfect for my coffee recipe as well. I prefer my coffee at around 75 C. Mm. For the AeroPress. Rarely humid climates can have an effect on baking. I believe it. I'm not like a master baker. Like I don't do a lot of baking. It's just not my jam. I prefer savory foods. <laughs> um, hey, still bake savory foods. I, th I think it's just it's just gluten and and carbohydrates that are currently. Yeah, but baking is you want to do the cookies and the scones yeah, exactly. and the cupcakes or the muffins, mm -hmm. right? And who wants a savory muffin? That was the other recipe I looked at. That was uh, oh, Corey does. How about some bacon and cheese muffins? Don't those sound good? Yes. Y yes. <laughs> where? Where? Hook me up. Well, I mean, I like. There's recipes for them. I don't have any right now. 
<laughs> the other recipe I, I've discovered from Viokara was banana bread. Yeah. Apparently it's it's a it's good in banana bread. Makes it fluffier. Interesting. And gives you protein. Curdle. Yeah. Curdle. Curdle, curdle, curdle. We've got one more minute left for our curdling, hopefully. And if that doesn't work, I'm gonna suggest we just take it off and just continue to add more of this curdling. It's just like dump that bottle in and see what happens. Um, uh, for uh, I think there's a pretty good if I can remember correctly, there's a pretty good five roses flower uh, or a five roses like basic muffin recipe that's not sweet, and I think it's like cup and a half of flour and a tablespoon of baking powder and some salt, unless you're using salted butter. But you know what? Do both. I think it's better. Um, I agree. Yeah, salted butter is the shit, and adding salt is fine. It's, you don't add much salt. And hold on, and then a cup of milk and two eggs and like two tablespoons of sugar. So it's not a sweet muffin recipe. Because if you read a lot of like contemporary muffin recipes, the sugar is like two thirds of the flour. They're very sweet, they're very moist, they're very sugary. Um, and then I think you add to that is like a cup of grated sharp cheddar cheese. And I think you might replace some of the, because this is a very old recipe, I think you might replace the third cup of oil it calls for with a third cup of bacon fat. Mm. And then some crumbly bacon. Mm. And I think that's quite good. That is five minutes. Oh my god, I'm too scared to look. I really want this to have worked. Ooh! Some curds! Things happened. <gasps> curds! curds! Okay, great. We did it, Ian! We are curdy. Is that enough curds? I th think it is. Oh, it's thick. Yep. It's actually thickened. Triple thick. This doesn't quite look like the illustration that was. No, but I think what we're going to get, we're going to get a lot of uh, what we want from the. Uh, uh, yeah. From the process of pressing. Can you want to focus up on that? Yeah. That's, yeah. So, let's. That's definitely curdled. Kathleen. When in doubt, eyeball it. Would you do me the honors of pouring that into this? Yes. Ready, Beige? I hope so. Okay. Oh, here. Let me let me pour this way for the uh -oh. benefit of camera. Sure. Oh. Sorry. No, that's all right. Wanna, I don't want it to overflow. Yeah, that's mega curdled. Perfect. That's what we want. Sorry, Ian. I know I'm taking a while, but I don't. No, that's all right. Look at look at how clear that liquid is coming through. Yeah, that's way. All the protein has been properly curdled. Oh, it's even more curdly at the bottom. Nice. Oh yeah, that's really curdy. Here, can I um help this process out a bit? Please. Oh, oh, here we go. This is what we're gonna want to do. Stay. Okay. Can I help in any way? Push this into the top, and then use the uh, the white spoon to ladle some out. What a pain in the butt this could be to do by yourself. Oops, <laughs> Oop, sorry. That's all right. Too much, too much force. Okay, I think that's good. Because now what we're going to want to do here. You still have more curds. Do we? Yeah, we have lots more curds. Oh my gosh. But I think there's still a lot of liquid in there. Yeah. OK. What if we like lifted the cheesecloth a bit? Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. Here. There we are. Yep. I got it. OK. Get a friend to help you make tofu. <laughs> or. Just have better in equipment. Oh, oh no. Are we? You, we've had a containment breach. Oh no. Okay, well. That, that did a lot, that, that helped a lot though. Yeah. Here, let's do this. Mess everywhere. <laughs> I 
Yeah, I'm getting a lot of liquid out of this. Hmm. Smash TCG, you just walked in on people making tofu from scratch. Yeah, this is rad. All right, do you want more curds? Uh, Actually, I have an idea. Hold that over the white bowl for a second. Mm -hmm. And I'll tell you my plan. What's the plan? Yes. I mean, we're going to lose some curds that way. But we are going to lose some curds that way. Not so many that I'm worried about it. We got a lot of curd. Okay. That was quite effective. Just toss that if perhaps there. slightly wasteful. God, honestly, you could just dump that whole thing back in. Hmm. Yeah, apparently the next bit is the slow step. So, can you dump that white uh, bowl in? Yep. Thank you. Oh, here. Yeah. Ooh. Wow! Oh, oh. This to grip. Do we have any more cheesecloth? We do. I would double bag this. And I would I tell you why. Because I think the sides on this are not high enough. I think you're right. Here, how about how about I take this? Great. And you take that. And I grab another cheesecloth. But look at this. Do you see in the in the strainer here, Beige, if you can get this white on white action here? Oh sure, why not? But this like little like there pad in, in of like China. smushed curd. Looks like very soft tofu. In fact, I'm just going to scrape some of that out there. Oh, wow. You want to do that as well? Yeah, sure. Yeah, tastes like tofu too. <laughs> so. Here, I have a. Let's put that back in there for a short time and then. We're here for a good time. Not a long time. Well, we are here for a long time. <laughs> We're here for a time. All right. Uh oh, I, I, I squoze too hard. Let me just empty that out as well. Yeah, sorry. I was, I'm squeezing more liquid from the tofu. That's quite nice. Yeah. Okay, I think that's that's going to be good. And now, we, we don't even need to use this, actually, which is good. Because we got enough liquid out that yep. it's now... Now... I wonder I'm... if this is good for your skin. Oh, probably. Patented Ian Horner. <laughs> the Horner DeVere Skin Serum System. <laughs> Smooth away wrinkles in your decatelage. With... In your gentleman's area. <laughs> <laughs> All right. The groin has never been so smooth and proteiny. I'm going to be right back because I'm going to find something to push down on this with. And then we can get a... Or you know what? Yeah. You don't want to use our award? I do want to use our award. But I... Oh, wait! We can use our award. Where's, your, where's the award? I just smeared tofu juice all over my neck. I'm going to walk in front of the camera. I just wanted to protect the bottom of it. Oh, that's good. good oh, of you. Graham would appreciate that. Yeah. And so now we have... Oh my god, Asantheus. Smooth away the wrinkles. Ugh. There we go. Now, we won't get tofu juice on that. Probably. Maybe like... Something with a rounded base, like a, like a bowl? Yeah. Um, if we big butt plug. <laughs> I'll go get the big butt plug. The big butt plug? The biggest butt plug, please. The big plug, butt please. plug. Actually, deploy the... So our thanks to Child's Play for uh, their wonderful uh, tofu weight. I'm sure it will be delicious. Hey, uh... I can't believe that worked! Yeah. So hey, good. I think that was a valuable lesson about cooking. Mm -hmm. We followed the directions exactly, and it did not work. So we didn't give up, but we thought, huh, our thing isn't curdling. So what we need to do is, how do we make it curdle? We can try to add more of the curdling Agent. Uh, agent and see if that works and if that doesn't work well it doesn't it wasn't working now so now it's still not working right 
Uh, and that uh, that was actually highly effective. Mm -hmm. So I so that's always thank you. Beach. If things aren't working, they're already broken. Yeah, exactly. Right? You can't break it anymore. Oh, wait, 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 one it... second before you do that. I want it. There's more water in the bottle. Uh, good. I don't. I think this is a little bit too big for that now. So where's something else that's heavy around here that'll fit inside that bowl? How long do we have to leave this weighted down for? They suggest 15 to 20 minutes. Oh, that's it? Yeah. This is like so. ASMR level. Oh, you know what? We can use water? Just uh, put water in the bowl? Water would work, or we could just use this. Oh. So I'm thinking that it's probably, I don't know if we need to, there we go. Perfect. I don't think we need to make the second type of tofu. No, I think I don't think we have time. I, that, that's my thought on this. But we can answer some questions. And, and have a little chat. And we have time to eat the tofu once this is finished. Yeah, that sounds great. We'll get some... Do we still have that bottle of soy sauce in the fridge? Probably. I'll go find it. Thank you. Uh, I wish we had some, like, sriracha or something. Oh. Uh, really? Sriracha? And tofu. Just to have a little spice to it. Okay. My, my, one of my favorite ways of, uh, in fact, how I learned to like eating tofu was hiyayako tofu, which is just the block of tofu yeah. with a little bit of ground ginger uh, and a little and some, oh, bonito flakes. Oh. Shredded on top, and then you just pour soy sauce over the top of it. That sounds delicious. And that's it. So maybe, maybe a little ground uh, daikon radish on the side. Interesting. I like how we're using one soy to weight another soy. <laughs> uh, also, like, there is a lot of leftover tofu whey here. Is there any use for this? From my understanding, no. There's nothing that you want to do with the whey. I think you probably just feed it to pigs because well, you're making your own tofu because you're a farmer. That's actually what the uh, what, what the okada generally is used for for the most part. Animal feed? Is, yeah, it, it becomes animal feed because it's so incredibly high in protein and other nutrients. That it's 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 a it's a superfood. Mm -hmm. As much as one can be. Soy on soy violence? No, no, this is just us using all parts of the soybean. Oh, right, you oh. collection of different things to oh. try on your tofu. No. 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 Pick no. one. I'll take the rest away. <laughs> Thank you. Good choice. <laughs> you sure don't want the Tabasco? White sure. Maybe a couple forks and a knife, too. You bet. And a plate. Thank you. All right. As you know, no plate necessary. We've got the bowl. Right. Why dirty two dishes? Mm -hmm. Oh, good. We've turned into an LRL segment, says the ocean you <laughs> sub. <laughs> right. So was there anything else I needed to mention here? So one of the things that they suggest doing is uh, rinsing the tofu after a while, afterwards. Why? Well, partially to remove any bitterness from the uh, excess nagati. But tasting that stuff that came out of the... It was the, not bitter. Uh, no, not, not one bit at all. I wonder how our cold soy milk tastes. Now it is nice and cold. Well, that one is the one from the store. Oh, yes, that's right. Because tell the glass is There's dirty. a little bit left there. there. I mean, we could always cook up another batch of fresh soy milk. Yeah, there's no bitterness to it. It's just green hmm. and fresh tasting. In fact, actually, I might just do that. Uh, do another batch of soy milk? Yeah. While we're waiting? Oh, no, not necessarily while we're waiting. I think oh. I'd, have, I'd want to... Like at home? Yeah, I'd want to wash things out before I did that, because this has been sitting here drying and being. Thanks, Thank Beesh. You. You're welcome. So basically, so here's a... Re so let's go over that recipe you mentioned again. It's tofu, like tofu like this, or tofu that oh, you buy at the yeah. store. Oh, yeah, tofu. Yeah, what's the... If you're buying the tofu at the store, because perhaps you are not making your own tofu, <laughs> So for hiyaku, I'd, I'd suggest silky, uh, like soft. Like a soft? Yeah, soft. Okay. Not extra soft. Hmm. But uh, you can go medium if you prefer something a little bit medium. Don't go hard because the hard tofu isn't. It has a lot of the water pressed out of it already. It does, and it's a little bit too crumbly in the, uh, in the yeah, yeah. This is something that you want to just kind of disintegrate on in your mouth. When yeah. You're, Okay. So, block of, of soft tofu. Mm -hmm. Just uncut up, just like, there yep. you go. Uncut, drain it, 
Uh, if you're, if you're now, what's the proper technique for draining tofu? We have nothing but time to kill you. You're right. <laughs> is there a proper technique for draining tofu? Should you drain tofu? Yeah, yes, you should definitely drain your tofu. Oh. There's no reason that you you don't want. <laughs> See, we're doing it right now. <laughs> yeah. You don't want uh, don't want wet tofu because it's just going to dilute all the uh, all the flavors. All right. So how do you drain this medium soft tofu? Really, I just cut holes in the package and just sit it in the sink. Interesting. Just let it let it drain out? Do you weight it down or anything? No, no. If you're, if, when you start pressing tofu, that's when you actually start making it more more firm and more dense, mm. which is what we're doing right now actually as well. But uh, you can't really, it's more difficult to make silken and soft tofu at home mm. because you need to get the, you need to get the rate of curdling just right. Right. So you want really small particles. We probably could have that would, if you're making silken tofu, I imagine you're actually taking like pH measurements and stuff I like that. I think so. I think you're probably also doing some filtering too. It's, uh, it's not for home use, shall mm. we say. Yeah. And by the way, if you're expecting exactly like store-bought tofu from this recipe, you're not going to get that. No, I'm excited because I eat store-bought tofu quite frequently. But, so. but you're going to get different, uh, different texture. All right. Different so, consistency. So we got our block of yeah. like Silky or medium tofu? Yeah, me, me, uh, yeah, soft tofu. Don't go with the whole big block uh, unless you're like me and you just really want to chow down on a lot of tofu. <laughs> you value quantity yeah, I'd in say your get, food. Get, get the small packages, you know, squ the square size or so. Mm -hmm. Then you're going to want to just put it on a plate. Doesn't need to be anything fancy. You don't need anything under it. It's just a plate with tofu on it. This is my kind of presentation. Yes. All right, so then what do I do? Uh, then the next step is you're going to want to grind ginger. Can I buy a jar of that grated ginger stuff that come like pre-made? I don't know if I've ever seen properly grated ginger that way. Uh, so I, I, I bought wouldn't. a jar on an impulse because I like having ginger, but I don't like necessarily always buying ginger root. What color was it? Uh, like yellowy white. Then it might be okay. Yeah, it was like Asian. Yeah, it was not I mean, from like, you know. Again, like anything, it's going to be better if it's fresh. Oh, it's certainly I, not the strongest. You had a lot. I, I generally always buy my so, ginger fresh. All right, so so you so you grate some fresh ginger. And you just want like something about the size of a pea. Nothing right, it's, it's intense. Yeah. Okay, so stick that just right on the bottom or right in the top of your uh, middle of your tofu. Or in the, like a garnish. Yeah. Then yeah. you put a single coffee bean on top. No, yeah. then what do you do? <laughs> Take your bonita flakes and grab a small handful and again sprinkle those over the top of the tofu. Mm -hmm. If you're like me, you're going to want some daikon on the side, so you're going to need special equipment to grind your daikon, press the water out, make it into a nice little melt and put it on the side. Mm -hmm. It's a side dish. Right. And then take your soy sauce and just drizzle Go it to town. over the top of everything. Don't put too much on because that's going to be too much salt, but just enough to wet down the uh, wet down a bit of the bonito flakes. Mm. They don't need to be soaked. They just need to be wet. And then a little bit on top of the... Uh, the, the grated ginger as well, or, or the daikon as well. Yeah. Nice. So, so he at uh, Ninten says, "What does daikon taste like? What do you do with it?" Oh, there we go. There we Arclight go. Dino has just posted a picture. Oh yes, and scallions too are also a good addition to it. Mm. I keep forgetting about those because I don't grow my own. That looks delicious. I'm so hungry right now. Uh, daikon is like a mild radish. It's quite yeah. good. It's cuttlefish man got it as well. It's it's literally a type of radish. And in fact, it was it was daikons that made me realize. You liked radish? Yeah, and it's just that it's that extra outside skin that has all the heat in it in a radish. If you mm -hmm. peel a, a, a red radish, mm -hmm. it's going to taste almost exactly like a daikon. Really? So if you if you really want to try this and you can't find daikon, mm -hmm. which is pretty difficult to not find daikon, but eh, yeah. <laughs> if you can find radish, then you've got an option. <laughs> yeah. Cool. Um, so and then you eat it. And yep. it's really delicious. Yep. Do you have a t favorite type of soy sauce? Because not all soy is created equally. Yet. Yes, and I'm actually having, I, this is a problem I have yet to solve. Yeah. I, I need, I believe it's dark soy sauce mm. or is it medium soy sauce? I can never remember, but I've, every time I buy soy sauce, I buy the big jug from Kikoman. Mm -hmm. I think it's a, I think it's medium soy sauce that I buy and it's always the wrong kind. Mm -hmm. It's never the one you want that's for, Beach, do you remember which type of soy sauce it is that you want for sushi dipping? You want uh, you want light or medium for that, I yeah, think, because so. dark is, is... Dark is too rich. It's for cooking. It's mm -hmm. for Chinese cooking more often than not, in yeah. fact. Yeah, I always buy Japanese-style 
soy sauce, and I typically buy it in these smaller bottles because I do want it to be a lighter look. Yeah, I think the thing is I, I, I counted on Kikoman being the right kind because it's the Japanese brand, and it's the brand that was made in one of my towns I lived in when I was in Japan. Mm -hmm. mm. Turns out they make it more than one type of soy sauce. Yeah, I, I feel like uh, I always just go with like the expensive like stuff. I go to the market on Yates, which has like a very good import section here in town, mm -hmm. and they serve all sorts of like nice stuff. I'm just actually curious as to which type of soy sauce we've got here. This is the good kind, because I've had some of it before. Oh, they're all good. The kind for, yeah, sushi is sushi is uh. light soy sauce, says uh, says Matrix Night okay. eighty eight. Yep. No, this is the uh, hmm. the sushi kind. Yeah, because it's not as salty. Mm-hmm. It's got more of a should, umami flavor. We should just do like a we should just do like a weeby mukbang. Yeah, that's uh, I would not be upset with that. Bring our favorite uh, Japanese foods in. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Talk about how you might be able to make them or just how to eat them. Mm. I think that's one of the you know actually might just doing mukbangs of various food types mm -hmm. might be worth doing anyway because I know a lot of people get afraid of trying new foods simply because they're not aware of how to eat them. I'll eat any food. Yeah. I will eat any food once. <laughs> <laughs> I remember hearing a story about, uh, it was the John Roderick, actually, mm -hmm. who didn't really, he didn't like pho because he didn't know how to eat it. And it took him learning from a, uh, a little Vietnamese lady that you just take that bowl of everything you get and put it in the soup. Mm -hmm. And that's it. He thought it was more of like a sukiyaki type thing, where it's like you eat, you put a little bit in, you wait till it cooks, you eat it. Oh, well, I thought bit it was a time. little. It was a little bit of garnish. It was garnish. It wasn't necessary to the experience. Ah. Like, oh yeah, you can put the you can put these bean sprouts and uh, and leaves in if you like. Yeah. But no, <laughs> necessary. I, I like the I like the basil and the cilantro. Not so much on the hell, and I like spicy food. I have a good tolerance for spicy food, <laughs> but I'm not a fan of like the flavor of jalapenos. Mm. They're not my favorite. I, you know, I actually prefer the uh, the bird's eye chili to mm. the jalapenos. And it's one of the things that I instantly judge at a pho place, which type of pepper they, they provide you with. Mm, which is unfortunate, because it doesn't always match Indicate up. quality. Exactly. Our, the best pho place in Victoria gives you the jalapeno. Mm -hmm. Is there a place that gives you the bird's eye? Not that I've found yet. I was going to say. <laughs> uh... I've ever tried to make Heston Blumenthal's mushroom ketchup. Apparently, it's an English answer to soy sauce. Umami through, through to tomorrow. Love to see it made on TTSF. Good with beef. Mm. Huh? Mushroom ketchup. Corey, you like ketchup? I fucking love ketchup. What about it? W w would you eat a mushroom ketchup? Yeah, once at least. Great. <laughs> I'm gonna write that down. Thank you. I would put it right up all over my steak. You know. I, I would Good with beef. That's mm. what the man said. Yep, it is what the man said. Yep. Hester Blumenthal mushroom ketchup. Yeah. Revenant 77X says, yeah, agree. Jalap jalapenos taste kind of awful. Habaneros have a nice flavor to go with heat. Agree. Mm -hmm. Habaneros are tasty. Habaneros have the flavor, and that's why I put them in my chili beer. Mm -hmm. Scotch bonnet or riot. <laughs> Turns out serranos are the ones you got to watch out for in terms of the heat, though. Mm, mm. Um, somebody was wondering what they could do as a vegetarian alternative to fish sauce. Fish sauce has a very umami flavor, yep. and it has a lot of salt. So if you've never had it, yep. it tastes like it's made with anchovies. Anchovies are very strong, salty, rich. I just add soy sauce, I think. I would actually go with, yeah, soy sauce, or if you can find a... Uh, or, like, or like a soy aminos or something if you like can, that. If you can find kombu-based uh, dashi, make a, oh, make yeah. a very, uh, very heavy uh, liquid of that. But you're right, they also make, there is also uh, sort of an a amino sauce out there that you can buy that's not soy sauce, but it has all of the... Mm -hmm. I think it's like aminonin. Something yeah, like yeah, that. yeah. So Vegemite? I mean, kind of, yeah. Yeah. But a little less malty. Vegemite is kind of malty, I, fe I feel, I find. Because it's actually Vegemite, I believe, is like beer leavings. But it would probably be... It started out at... It would probably be okay if you mixed it into a uh, into another dish. Yeah, yeah. Like, That's true. Just, I, I, just add MSG. 
MSG. I mean, yeah, it's true, yeah. actually. Just go hard on MSG. Yeah. MSG, a lot of people, uh, it, it really upsets their digestive system, but it's MSG, mono, sodium, glutamate. It's salt and sugar bonded together at the chemical level. Yep. It's actually fantastic. Glutamate, it's found naturally in so many foods. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if you can't eat MSG, you probably also can't eat tomatoes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. And you can't eat tomatoes, you probably can't eat cheese, most types. Mm -hmm. It's, uh, yeah, the, the whole MSG panic was a complete uh, and utter bunk that was manufactured by a racist newspaper industry. Really? Yep. To stop people going to Chinese restaurants? Well, not, not even just to, to stop them from going to Chinese restaurants, just to be racist. Wow. Yeah. Doesn't the body produce MSG? I don't know. P possibly. I, I mean, it probably doesn't, it does, probably doesn't produce monosodium glutamate. It probably produces glu glutamate. Glutamate. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, this, the monosodium is just there as a uh, as a stabilizer. Oh, apparently Marmite is beer yeast, but Vegemite is different. Ah, that's the difference. Yeah, one time Beach tried the yeast leavings from my uh, from my beer. Yeah, How was it Beach? awful? Yeah, I bet. Why did you try that? Because it was there. Yeah, it's supposed to be nutritious. Yeah, I tried it because it's like I'm gonna taste a little of this because <gasps> you can smell it and it's like. This smells like, yeah, okay, I'm gonna try a bit of this. Mm, no. Frickin' Majig says that it, uh, that it was originally called Chinese restaurant syndrome. So, wow, yes, yeah. very racist. Now, here here we go. Geller in the Law says the body produces a lot of things. It's true, like poop. We don't eat poop, though. <laughs> so just because it's natural doesn't mean it's good to eat. It's part of the Krebs cycle or something. Oh, I've heard MSG is in one of KFC's 11 herbs and spices. I would not doubt it. No, that was, I am betting his salt, I, garlic salt. MSG salt. Celery salt, probably. Probably. Oh my goodness, look how oh, firm that wow. got. Wow. I should have got you a different bowl because white on white. <laughs> hang on a minute. Uh, white bring, on white is stupid. Bring one of the blue plate speech, if you yeah. can, please. Oh, and we got even more liquid out. Yeah, so we can show that off to you. Someone. No, no yeah, no, no one's going to see it's that. It's just some clear ooze. It's about, it's, it's a, it's like about a shot worth. But yeah, I think it's a. Uh, if your recipe does not succeed, try, try again, change things, mix it up. Well, this is actually the attitude that I have with regards to all the projects I do here, mm -hmm. and what got me into tinkering in the first place is you know playing around with things that broke, trying to open them up and fix them. Because mm -hmm. you can't break them any more than they already are. Yeah, I feel like that too. It was so little; it might have assumed that this was like it was a very high concentration, where this I can tell you from tasting it is not. I think that might actually just be one of the uh, what do you call them, the dietary supplement versions. Yeah, and is not the cooking version. Oh my. Okay, so this is interesting. Because it's still warm. Oh. How but fun. You can see that it really has firmed up. You've got the ind indentations of the cheesecloth in it. Mm -hmm. Now, this is one of those areas where building a or buying a proper tofu press might have been a good idea. But hey. What a fun thing to make at home with your kids. Yeah. All right, Ian. Whoop. Do the honors. It's like a firm tofu pancake. That's actual tofu. I'm so proud of us. Mostly Me you. I too. helped, but I didn't really do a whole lot. So I'm going to suggest we try a piece before we drizzle some. Uh, I'm going to just pick out that little hair that oh, we yeah. got in there. Go right ahead. You ain't seen nothing. This this is not a sterile kitchen Wait, environment. Wait, do you want a fork or a spoon? I'll take the spoon. I, I don't think it really matters. Oh, it's actually quite firm. It, that's more resistance than I thought nice. I would get. Nice. Bon appetit, everyone. Oh. Hmm. Okay, I've eaten a lot of tofu. Mm hmm This is sweeter than normal tofu. Yes, it is. There's no sugar in it. Mm -hmm. It's just the natural sugars. This is going to be delicious. With so this is really good. Yeah. I want to try a bite, Beach? Would love to. Corey? No. Okay. Mm. Like it's tofu. Yeah. But it's like a little sweet. Mm hmm. So I think what I'd like to do, if I were to do another version of this or mm -hmm. another batch, is I would probably end up pressing oh. it a lot more. <laughs> Generally, like my tofu a little bit firmer. Mmm. 
it's nice so that I can really see the texture on yeah. this camera. So that's good. That's delicious. That's really good. Bees, do you want to try a bite with soy sauce? I would oh. love to. Yep. Here. Corey, do you want to try a bite with soy sauce? Okay, I really, really want it. I'm allergic. I don't expect it to cause any major reactions. I didn't realize you're allergic to soy? Yeah. <laughs> Everything we eat soy in is cooked. Ah, but this is not 100% cooked, right? Yeah, so I usually eat, like, soy milk causes problems. But mm -hmm. I'm, go I'm going to go for it. Okay. Beach, would you send this over to Corey? I'm sorry, I wouldn't have kept asking if, you had, if I had realized. All right, hang on. Yeah. And w when you say allergic beach or Corey, how 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 major of a reaction would you have? Uh, this will be tingly gums and indigestion. Good. I this just will not I, I just want yeah, I just want to assure people at home when she says allergic, she's not going to die from this. Here at Tinker Taylor, our motto is anaphylaxis or bust. Yeah. Ooh, that's really good. Oh, really nice tofu. Yeah, I would. Yeah, I. It's lightly sweet. Ian, you did know she was allergic to soy. Yes. Let's be fair, okay? People are like, you didn't know that? And it's like, no, you, you did know that. Mm. But you offered her anyway, because that's what the polite thing to do is. Well, it's the polite thing to do, and also, I mean, it's it's a low-level allergy, so sometimes the benefits outweigh the the discomfort. Is that true for this time? I, I would say yes. Okay. Yeah, this is... Probably the best tofu I've ever eaten. Well, I've only ever eaten store-bought tofu, though. Yeah, you know what? I'm I'm enjoying this enough that I can I can very confidently say that I will be making this again, and this means that I probably will be coming back to do a a tofu press. Yeah, because a to design. a proper tofu press would make this a lot better. I think it would make it a lot easier. It would also mean that I could I would end up with a block of tofu mm -hmm. when I'm done, rather than this. <laughs> Which is, like, it's the same food. It's just in a weird... Pancake. Yeah, pancake lump. Yeah, this is great. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm so surprised at how good it is. Mm -hmm. Wow. Oh, yeah, when you get to the corners where it's actually been pushed a little bit harder, mm -hmm. it's even better. The thinner parts? Yeah. Well, the... the... I don't know if it's that they're thinner. I try it from that edge right in there. Do you think oh, no, that, no, sorry, this area right there, that curve. Do you think that it's someone who has never had tofu before oh, yeah, it's, it's firmer. should buy their own tofu first or try making their own tofu first? Buy it first. Yeah, because yeah, if, you, if you're... Because you don't like it. Yeah. Well, and you don't know what you're trying to make if no. you're trying to make it first. Oh, I'm going to have one more piece of that. Delicious. I'm yeah. so impressed, yeah. Whereas before, like tofu, if you had tofu before, you'd know what it tastes like. This is sweeter and milder than tofu. Mm -hmm. And even though we added a lot of the co the co coagulating agent, um, there's no there's no there, bitterness to it. There's no bitterness. It's there's none. this is a salt. There's it's not like, it wasn't really salty until we added the soy sauce. The soy sauce really. Can you imagine making? We should have had the scallions and the ginger and the daikon. We should have actually also brought in a, a, a cube of store bought too. But just judging from the, the no soy way, milk, I know, I know. The soy milk tastes exactly like store bought, store bought, store bought tofu. The, like, industrial foods, I always find, have sort of a dusty taste to them, mm. and there is none of that in this. This is all. This is just clear flavor, mm -hmm. and I, I. I don't think I can go back to normal tofu. Are you just going to start making your own tofu? Sometimes. <laughs> Convenience is, is also very uh, appealing. If we do a, if we do a weeby mukbang, which yeah. is a, like a social eating stream, if you don't know what that is. Um, if we do a weeby mukbang, just make your own tofu, and then we'll do like the, the tofu dish, but mm -hmm. with homemade tofu. I think, yeah, you're, that's it, is that actually, anytime I make hiyayaku tofu, Definitely going to make it myself. Mm -hmm. For you know the uh, the soups that I make, where I throw in deep fried cubes of tofu. Just yeah. that because yeah. that thing of tofu is like three dollars. Yeah, exactly. Right. But when I want to taste the flavor. Mm -hmm. Ian, would you like to hear the results of the poll? Mm, please. Uh, from least to most votes, we have after a small cut on hand, the tofu achieves sentience, and everyone has to hide from the bean homunculus. <laughs> The tofu eats Ian, just all of him. Mm -hmm. 
Big Tofu discovers that Ian is hornering in on their market and calling a drone strike. After purchasing the wrong kind of beans, the team goes ahead with the recipe creating bean boozled tofu. Oh no. And last, the resulting creation is given its own stream, Tofun with Tofu, and becomes the most popular lore member. <laughs> Tofun with Tofu. You know what I like about this recipe, Ian? Mm -hmm. Despite yeah. the fact that you had to like soak your beans and all that, mm -hmm. and it was like kind of involved, it was pretty easy. Most yeah. of the time we were just sitting around chatting. Yep. It was pleasingly hands-on. Yeah. Uh, we probably screwed up several parts of it in like with the boiling and the temperature and it still worked fine. Oh, it came out fine. If I... you make if you make tofu, I seriously add the recommended amount of coagulated ingredient and then if it doesn't coagulate into like big curdy chunks, just keep going. Mm. Or better yet, make your own coagulant so that you know what the concentration is and then you can work off of a proper recipe That's true. rather than eyeballing. Yeah, eyeballing's fine though. Yeah, it worked for us. But, yeah. Wow, that, yeah, big success. Hey, are you going to take some of that home for Graham to try? I don't think Graham likes tofu very much. Mm. But you know who loves tofu is Penelope. We should definitely wrap up some of that. She'll be in bed by the time I get oh. home. Well, it stays for a day. Eh, it's fine. You take yeah. it home. I'll make some for her sometime. She might. She might think it's weird because it doesn't taste like the tofu she's used to eating. Or she might like this better and then expect this. Ruin tofu and then you'll for ruin her forever. For me. <laughs> I can just serve it like, you know what one of her favorite meals is? Tofu and miso. She likes tofu and miso. Yes, but she, she, we take the tofu out and put it on a plate and let it cool down. And then she eats the tofu and then she eats the soup she separately. She likes tofu and miso. She loves owls. Yes. Have you discovered the secret uh, speaker I have in her bedroom to program her yet? <laughs> no. Keep okay, going, though. Good. Yeah, uh, what else does she like that you like? Hmm. Hmm. Lots of things. I think she's just starting to learn How do you feel about like... green beans and broccoli? Uh, pretty high. She loves them. Oh my. By request last night, green bean or er, green beans and tofu. Well, just wait till we get. And you own. said, and you and you thought you couldn't have children. Your soul has <laughs> has transferred into another child. Or you said you you said you didn't want children. Yeah, this is so much easier though because other people's children are so much better because you get to give them back when you're done. That's true. Yeah. Speaking of being done, I think that brings us to the end what of this that? episode. <laughs> so, that being said, I want to thank everyone who has shown up to help us make tofu here today. To those people in the room, to Corey and Beej, and to all of you watching at home. To those of you who just sat around here watching, thank you so much for showing up. And especially thanks to those of you who chose to support us either at patreon.com slash loadingreadyrun and to those of you here at twitch.tv for your subscriptions and your bits. Specifically, Cuttlefish Man, who subscribed for 16 months. I never soy such a cooking process, so I'll temper my expectations. Here's hoping that this doesn't poise too much of a tofi for y'alls. Wow. Couldn't pick a username for 19 months says this sub message get a small cut, gets a small cut on hand forever, giving all of Ian a taste for blood. It's Selectone, who has subscribed for 43 months. Hot liquid sugar can never go wrong. And Necronida is a brand new scriber. Thank you for subscribing. Kinacat has subscribed for nine months, saying, I suppose that this is that sub babby thing that people are babbling on about. Anyway, DIY tofu. Woo! And Himuel for 19 months says, If you needed to curdle, why don't you just swear at it a bunch? That works, right? I mean, we didn't try that. No. Prof Falconer is a brand new subscriber. Welcome, Prof Falconer. I have a Porsche you need to buy. And Matt Mitchell, 45 for 52 months, says the most important lesson to making tofu, a flared base. <laughs> Always. TK Sata 1 for three months, though I missed the boat for a resub. Anyway, it's my birthday, so take my money. Thank you for your money, and happy birthday. Yeah, and Hagrid the TARDIS for five months says, Five months, hooray! Super hyped for all the new shows. Hi, guys. Beofern is an eight-month subscriber. Thank you so much, Beofern. Beofrin. And thank you for 1,001 bits from Earth and One Crazy Matt Captain Raving Penguin Type 1 Diabetic. Or is it just Type 1? I think it's Type 1 now. Type 1, The Flying Dutchman, Xanto69, Banriel, Mistaria, Rock Pusher, and Contingent Cat. 
And speaking of all of those new shows, and speaking of me and Ian, mm -hmm. if you haven't checked out, we just launched a new show, which is out on our YouTube channel. It's called The Panelists. Second episode. The second episode just so went good. up. It has Ian and Beige and Ben and Serge, and you are all arguing. Arguing. You're all discussing. You're solving problems. Mm -hmm. The problem of, do you buy a fridge magnet from the gift shop at the end of the universe? And what is the best name for a dog? Mm hmm and quite frankly, I, I have to thank you for creating that show just for giving me an outlet for so many United Nations jokes. Oh, I know. I know. Your joke about The Hague, very good. Yeah. Did we mention the name of the show? Yeah, it's The Panelists. The Panelists, good. It's on our YouTube channel. That's youtube.com slash loading ready run. Please check it out mm -hmm. Hit the subscribe it. button there and hit the subscribe or the, uh, the follow button here yeah, if you haven't already to let you know when any of our shows are coming yeah. up. Speaking of coming up shows, Corey... What is coming up later this week? Oh, that's tomorrow, and that's me and Corey. Uh, on Now Kiss, which is tomorrow morning at 9.30, Corey and I are going to be playing some, like, small RT games. We're going to be playing Oedip the Oedipus Dating Sim. Oh, wow. We're going to be playing Great Personality, which is actually an art exhibit about the Myers-Briggs personality type. Oh, wow. And we're going to be playing, if we have time, the game, the game in which you outwit a person using like uh, like one of them like bad, stupid boy. The dating, what are the dating? Pickup artists. Pickup artists. Thank you. You try to uh, outwit Puas. So. I think that's a sub game in Yakuza Six. Anyway, after that, it's the crapshoot coming up at one p.m. where the crew will be filming, filming. two and editing one. So this is a yeah, the big one to see. After that, Friday Night Paper Fight is our Magic the Gathering paper stream. The crew will be getting together to do one-on-one, -on -one, head head-to-head brawl. Yeah. Brand new format. A lot of fun, I, see, I hear. Mm, I can't wait to try it out. <laughs> I've only played group brawl. Then on Saturday, it may or may not be Adam's Game House. I'm not sure if that got resolved or not, but uh, check, keep your eye on the schedule. Keep your eye on that follow button so you can find out if that is happening. He, he, he will not be here. He no. will not be here. That is not happening. But what is happening? <gasps> Loading Ready Live. Loading Ready Live is coming back for our special Cinco de Mayo episode. It is not a Cinco de Mayo episode. In fact, well, it might end up being. We don't know. But something is going to happen. That's true. Tune in at 6 p.m. Pacific for that. Then on Sunday at 4 p.m. Pacific, Heather and I will be playing the Metronomicon. That's very cool. Oh, and then on Monday... Checkpoint Plus. That's mm -hmm. me, Graham, and Paul. And then Dice Friends. Oh, brand so new campaign. Who's who's running that campaign, Kathleen? Me. Whoa, whoa, whoa. So think of it as what did I describe it as? Lord of the Rings mm -hmm. meets Moonrise Kingdom. Ooh. <laughs> and who's going to be on that? That is me, mm -hmm. hosting with Alex mm -hmm. and Ben mm -hmm. and Cameron. Cameron and Surge, who's another new ad addition to the Dice Friends. So uh, it's a, it's called Camp Nettleby. Ooh. So and that's a little that's just a, it's a little mini campaign. It's going to be very fun. That's... I hope so. I've been writing extremely self indulgent box text, which I shall be reading. And that'll be going I'm on. Quite excited for two, three weeks. Three weeks. Three weeks. Camp Nettleby starting next Monday at five. That's Pacific. right. So that's very cool. And that takes us to through to Tuesday, New Day Tuesday. Who knows what that's going to be? Something new. And then, of course, one more at 6 p.m. James will be jamming out those PUBG games. And because James is in the PUBG Partner Program, mm -hmm. if you haven't, if you haven't, if you play PUBG and you haven't participated, he's running custom games. We've he was playing to like midnight like last weekend. It's super fun. We play with members of the community, so come on out for that. Get in the cup some games, play some cool modes, and do things you wouldn't normally be able to do. And then rounding out Tuesday, I we'll just want to note uh, if you oh. want to play with the community games, joining the Lure Discord is a good oh, way to you, start. Corey. Yes. Yes. We could always use more people there anyway. But rounding out Tuesday is going to be Talking Simulator, where I believe they will be either finishing or continuing on their run of Spec Ops The Line. So you don't want to miss that as well. Then Wednesday, it's 9 o'clock at the 9 o'clock time where James mines all the things. And then Watch and Play happens at 1 p.m. Pacific. Graham and Alex will be playing bad, bad, bad games. Finally, AFK rounds out Wednesday. I don't remember what's being played there. I have a which planner, but it's like unfortunate in the other room. Because I think I might be on that on that AFK 
I will be there. And no, we... Spec Ops is finished, apparently. Okay, then it will be something else for that. You know, we're getting into the murky distances of next yeah. week. Let's not worry about it. <laughs> Wednesday. Red Dragon Inn makes its right, return Red to AFK. Red Dragon Inn's AFK. coming back finally. We love Red Dragon Inn. By popular request, Red Dragon it's Inn returns. From both within and without Moonbase. Yeah, yeah. It's, a, it's, a, it's a quite a fun game. It's uh, super, super delightful. Yeah. So if you haven't, if you are like, oh, I like AFK, but sometimes those games are very complicated, Red Dragon is great. <laughs> is Earth One says, gambling? I'm in. Yeah. But that brings us to the end of our broadcast day here on. Loading Ready Run. Thank you so much for watching, everyone. We will see you in a fort. Hold on. Because that might, that. That might be, this might be the last show for a while on account of. Yes. Odafest and uh, Road Quest. Yes. yes. Next, uh, in a fortnight, you can find Beej and I in Calgary, Alberta, for as well as Ben, for Odafest. And Tinker Taylor Solder Fry will be making its return in, in June. June. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. So ends our broadcast day. Ever forward. Never learning. <laughs>